man. Charlie Joe these teams are evenly matched they played a tight one last year I think the teams are evenly matched going into this ball game that usually means that the team's best players have to rise up to give it a team an advantage who has to play well for Arkansas today I think the key players to stay for Arkansas will be the Earl Scott the center the reason is he has to stay healthy because the backup center will be playing left guard today his name Tony Nagy he's getting his first start today he was injured last year he'll be excited to play today well, Carolina's success rides on Brandon Bennett on offense, I believe. They may pass 50 times tonight, but Brandon's all-purpose yards are what be important. And on defense for Carolina, Tony Watkins, the leading tackler for three years in a row, will have to do two things. He'll have to help out on run support on the option, and he'll have to call those coverages because they could get beat deep. Now, we've talked about the players. What strategic points does Danny Ford point out to his team before the ball game? Danny has talked all week about controlling the football with the running game. He has to have a good performance up front. With the offensive line, the runner backs have to hang on to the football. Secondly, he has to get pressure with the defensive ends. Get, the, get upfield, keep Bennett in the backfield if he can, put pressure on the quarterback, Tannehill. Thirdly, the kicking game has to come forward today. The kicking game, as everybody knows, has to win at least two games a year for you. I believe for Carolina, on offense, they have got to exploit a secondary of Arkansas that doesn't see the passing game a lot. That's important. Secondly, they can't get beat on the big play by a play-action pass off of the option game. Barry Looney's very good at that. And third and finally, it's a Danny Ford factor. Danny loves to get into the fourth quarter and play, use that run game to power a football team. Well, guys, we seem to have it all covered down here, but we'll keep you up to date on the action just in case. Very much, gentlemen, to receive the kickoff after winning the toss, the Arkansas Razorbacks, decked out in white. South Carolina in their garnet jerseys, set to kick it away with Back Lance there. Ellison Number to do five. the honors. Report here are the weather the conditions. East. Just an absolutely great Number night for a football here. game. Temperature right now, 83 North degrees, but beginning to drop. Should be 76, 77 degrees, probably in about the next half hour win from the southeast at 10 miles an hour back deep twin safeties for Arkansas number one JJ Meadows and number two Carl Kidd last week Meadows against SMU three returns for 55 yards and a long return of 24 both are speedsters the officials the referee asked her size more Ted Davis is the umpire and the kick is away and short and will go out of bounds. It will come out to the 35 yard line. And that's where Arkansas will play it first offensively. Charlie, that's a big break for Arkansas. When you, if you have a ball control offense, you run the option the way Arkansas does. And that gives you a little breathing room where uh, Lunny can throw the football if he wants to early. And I'm sure that that's exactly what head coach Arkansas Prescott did not want to see happen. He wanted to get the ball downfield and see what his special teams could do on the opening kickoff. Linesman James Wilson, the line judge George Schubert. The side judge is Eddie Powers, the field judge Gerald Hodges, the back judge George Raniger. And here is the first offensive play of the game. Arkansas with a spread set in the eye formation in the backfield. Barry Luddy had a great game last week against SMU. Three-man front for South Carolina and first down the pitches to Malone, and Malone gets it across the 40 to the 41-yard line and gets six. Here are the starting lineups, the Arkansas offensive line with Rivers and Mitchell at the tackles, Schwartz and Baker at the guards, and Scott at center. Malone getting the first carry for Arkansas. A year ago, he had a big game against uh, South Carolina in Fayetteville, rushing for 141 yards. 
Spread set again for the Arkansas Razorbacks on a second down four. South Carolina stays in that three-man front with a backers off. Corners loose. Plenty down the line. We'll give it to the first man through, and he'll get two maybe. Here's a look at the defense for the South Carolina Gamecocks, and they must be much better up front. These guys have got to be better this week than they were last week. Absolutely, and, and you're going to have to really focus in on the linebackers and also that defensive line. They had difficulty getting to the quarterback, and Zaire had a field day against them. First big play of the ball game. It comes early, third down and one. This crowd is wild. Fabulous setting for a football game from the 44-31 Arkansas. Lunny on the quarterback sneak. I don't think he got it. He had to get to the 45. I think his headgear got there, but not the ball. You know, when you're a linebacker and you're on short yardage situations like this, you have to fill that gap. And that's exactly what Ronnie Smith did as he just shot the gap that time and shut down Lunny as he tried to make that necessary first down yardage. Fourth down here, the South Carolina DBs. And here comes the Arkansas punt team. And you hear this hometown crowd respond to a defensive effort that was pretty solid on Arkansas's first possession. Charlie, I don't know if Lunny checked off or not. Nobody lined up on Earl Scott, the center's nose. Lunny thought he could get it. Matt Waite to kick. Only one punt last week, and it traveled 20 yards. This is a boomer. It will be fielded at the 10-yard line and a fair catch by Toby Cates. Wade has to feel good, Charlie. As you said, only one kick to his credit as a college player. And last week against SMU, the center rolled the ball back to him. His eyes had to be as big as the moon. All right, here comes the South Carolina offense. First time that we have seen them in tonight's game. Let's see what Tannehill and company decide to come up with. Tannehill threw the ball 45 times against Georgia. A couple of touchdowns against uh, Georgia. And obviously, he'd like to have similar results uh, in tonight's game. What he'd like to have back from last week is an interception as South Carolina was driving against Georgia. He threw it across the middle, trying to get it to Brandon Bennett. It was picked off, and that was the end of the ball game. I think people here very, very excited, though, the way South Carolina played, going against really the number one Heisman candidate for Georgia and Eric Zire, who can pick just about anybody apart. And the situation for Brandon Bennett, this is a guy who had great stats in the first game against Georgia, but in tonight's game, look for him to see the ball coming out of the backfield a lot more. Flare patterns, also some screen setups. They want to get the ball into the hands of Bennett as many times as possible in tonight's game. Here's a Carolina offensive line. They did a good job in that first game. The tackles are Wheeler and Herring, the center. Beckwith, who is starting in the place of the veteran, Vincent Dinkins. Beckwith came on. He's a true freshman from Palatka, Florida. Last week against Georgia, did quite a job. And there are the backs, Tannehill and Bennett, two real stars of last week's game. Arkansas defense against the SMU in the opener last week gave up at 65 yards on the ground. They gave up 236 in the air. They faced a quarterback by the name of Ramon Flanagan who runs a 4-3. He was more of a threat to run. He was an excellent passer. There's a look at Arkansas defense. Marcus Adair, a big play man at the defensive end spot. And there are the backers, and here is the secondary. Tannehill in a first and ten with a play fake. Drops back to his own goal line, swings it out, far side. And battling up to the 15-yard line, Junior Soli, the nose guard, slides over to make the tackle. It is second down. Well, what did we just talk about before they went for the first play from scrimmage? We said they were going to do some little flares, set up some screens for Bennett. It's the first call of the game. Brandon Bennett had a touchdown catch against Georgia last week and picked up his eight 100-yard rushing game. 19 carries for 120 last week on the ground. Here's Tannehill to throw. Got a man open. Off the shoulder pad. Beautiful throw by Tannehill, but off the shoulder pad. Uh, Terrell Harris, the junior out of Miami, who had six grabs last week. Well, Terrell Harris has to catch this ball. I mean, the, the ball is right on the numbers, and this is something that you work on. It's a timing pattern. It's right there. Took his eye off of it momentarily. That's when it banged off the pads and fell harmlessly to the ground. Marcus Robinson, number 88, checks in the ball game as a wide receiver. He is 6'4", 205. He's a high school senior named one of the top seven players in Georgia by the Macon Touchdown Club. Out of the gun for the first time tonight for South Carolina on third down at about seven. Bad snap. Tannehill goes back. Eludes one man. Pump fakes. Fires. Complete and out of bounds. And Tannehill did a great job from maybe suffering a safety. 
pass to Brandon Bennett. Not many times you'll get out of the grasp of Marcus Adair, 6'3", 220-pound junior out of Memphis, Tennessee. He originally played at the Air Force Academy. It looked like Tannehill may have taken... I think the snap was just a little bit too high for him. And that was the case. You saw him lift the leg to put the man in motion to tell the center to snap the ball. He was looking back to the center, but the snap was just too high and too hard. And you know, Ray, it's very fortunate for Tannehill that he did indeed elude that tackle, and that at least got him away from the goal line, so now they have some room to punt the ball. Derwin Jeffcoat to kick with a long of 51 yards last week. Almost averaged 41 yards to kick. Line drive kick headed to Carl Kitt. Feels it at the Arkansas 43-yard line and looking for a wall. Great open field tackle for South Carolina. Well, that's number 29, Todd Clemens, who was running down the field that time. They forced it to the near side, and Abrams quickly came over and got the uh, initial stop. So they'll work in South Carolina territory at the Gamecock 47-yard line. You would think Arkansas missed a golden opportunity. There was a little bit of a lane there, 51 Brooks. Went by a guy. If he'd have made his block, Kit could have gotten the lane and he could have picked up some big yardage. Great field position for Barry Lunny and company and the Arkansas Razorbacks. South Carolina stuffed them on the opening series. We've got 11.26 to go first period. Three receivers set. Lunny with a pitch back and a great catch by Oscar Malone. Boy, was Barry Lunny popped. He wanted to handle the ball for a while so he could pitch it back to Malone or keep it. He knew he couldn't keep it. There was no place to go. Now watch Andre Brooks, 43, get into the flow of this play in a hurry. And that's great concentration by Malone. Second down. So it's second down and nine after the gain of one. South Carolina standing in that three-man front, and here is Lunny sprinting out to pass. On the run, pass is dropped by Mettig. Covering on the play was Lee Wiggins, the redshirt freshman out of Hartsville, South Carolina, getting his first start. Metters is a speedster out of Ruston, Louisiana. Lunny, a left-hander, rolling to his strong uh, side. Metters just took his eye off it. You won't see him drop many. Third down. So it's third down and nine. Lunny looks to the sideline to get his instructions. comes to the near side. James Perry to the far side. Lunny looks at a four-man front now as the linebackers walked up for South Carolina. Check off at the line on third and nine. Lunny with time across the middle. Meadows open. Trying to get to that first down marker. He's got it and goes out of bounds at the South Carolina 34-yard line. First down, Arkansas. Pass to Meadows. That's a good look First at J.J. Metters, one of the leading receivers in the Southeastern Conference. Money with good time to throw the football, did not get happy feet, did not come out of the pocket. Metters picked this up all on his own. Didn't get much, too many blocks downfield. He knew where the first, yard mark, the first down marker was. Money is one of two passing for 12 yards. First and 10 Razorbacks from the South Carolina 34-yard line. Here's another check off. He moves the end in tight. Carl Johnson. Option down the line. Lunny fakes the pitch, keeps it to the 26-yard line. And the tackle there by 27, Lee Wiggins. That time he found the alleyway. Charlie Lunny, not a threat to break it on you. But he's an excellent runner. He reads the option perfectly here. What he wants to do is get on the corner, and then he's got a one-on-one -on -one situation. He makes the right read, fakes the pitch, tucks it in, and gets good yardage. And the key here for South Carolina's defensive unit, they do not want to have their secondary guys making all the tackles. That means the guy handling the football has already broke containment at the line of scrimmage. Give straight up the middle. Big hole for the bruising fullback to the 20-yard line. And that is Oscar Gray, a 250-pounder tackle by linebacker Hank Campbell, the junior out of Charleston, South Carolina. That is Carlton Calvin, excuse me, instead of Oscar Gray. He ran like a 250-pounder. He's close. He's around 240. He probably was at 250 when he reported the uh, fall drills. Those two are like bookends. Uh, Oscar Gray, 6'2", 250. Calvin, 6'2", 236. First down and 10 Arkansas Razorbacks. Money, straight pitch. Malone with a cutback inside the 15 and nose diving to around the 12 where he'll be two yards shy of a first down. Arkansas gets eight 
on a first down call. Here's a situation for South Carolina. They're getting strung out along the line of scrimmage, and it's Arkansas obviously doing a great job up front. Gamecocks are going to have to adjust if they're going to have any success in stopping this drive. A year ago, a lot of folks said Arkansas did not have a big-time SEC back, and I think Oscar Malone has spoken for himself. He is in that league. Second down short for the Hogs. South Carolina trying to keep them off the scoreboard early with 9.22 to go first period. Lunny with the alleyway inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. First down goal to go Arkansas. Tackle by Ronnie Smith, the linebacker, number 50, the junior out of Athens, Georgia. We'll look at it one more time. Barry Lunny, junior, the young quarterback out of Fort Smith, south side. Last week, Lunny had a 79-yard touchdown strike to Meadows. That was the sixth longest pass play in Arkansas history, and he had another one. And he ran for 64 yards, averaged almost four and a half yards per carry. Not good foot speed, but he will surprise you when he's on the corner. We've got a timeout. 8:57 remains here in Columbia, South Carolina, and we're scoreless, but Ar scoreless, but Arkansas is knocking on the door. This is exactly the game plan for Danny Ford. Keep the crowd out of the game, and the way that you do that, Charlie, is ball control. Keep it on the ground and run it. Arkansas is throwing, what, two passes here, and this is their second possession, and a good sustained drive for them. They have done it on the ground, and the key for Brad Scott's game talks in this game, totally different than what was presented against Georgia. Georgia was more of a finesse team. Arkansas, much more physical than the Georgia Bulldogs because they can blow you off the line of scrimmage, and Arkansas has done that so far on this drive. The thing that makes it so tough for Arkansas opponents is trying to simulate the option in practice because very few teams run it anymore. This is Arkansas's 100th year of football, a big celebration this year in Arkansas. Some of the greats, one of them we had down on the sidelines, Joe Ferguson, one of the great quarterbacks in Arkansas history, and Barry Lunny will certainly go down in that select group of players like Bill Montgomery, Quinn Groby, Billy Moore, Ron Calcagney, Lamar McCann, and Brad Taylor. We should have asked Joe what happened to the Buffalo Bills in the first week of the NFL season. For those people who might be wondering, uh, Joe coached for a while at Louisiana Tech. He has moved and lives up in Fayetteville and is a uh, volunteer coach, I believe, for Shiloh Christian Academy. Time back in. Ball just outside the South Carolina eight-yard line. Calvin is the up back. The deep back is Malone for Barry Lunny. He'll check off at the line of scrimmage. Two wide outs for the Razorbacks. The pitch goes far side to Malone. Tries to go outside and a great tackle at the 10. Great tackle at the 10 yard line by strong safety Tony Watkins, a senior out of Little Rock who had 10 tackles last week against Georgia. Well, he's their leading tackler in that uh, in the defensive scheme and he comes up and fills his role perfectly here. He read the play, realized that they were going to try to sweep to the far side and committed himself immediately and was right on the spot to make the initial hit. So it will be a loss of a yard and a half, bring up second down and goal to go. Last week, Tony Watkins played some 90 snaps in the ball game against Georgia. Coach Brad Scott would like to give him a little bit more of a breather. He really didn't have one last week. Second down, goal to go. Give us up the middle to the fullback, Calvin, and he is stuffed in his tracks by Aubrey Brooks. Number 43, who had eight tackles and caused a fumble last week against Georgia. That play totally out of sync for Arkansas. It almost it looked like somebody may have jumped on the left side of the line. There is no flag. There's an Arkansas player shaking up. We'll get the glasses on to find out where that was. But I think the crowd noise had a little bit to do with that. Well, Ray, what did we just talk about a few moments ago? We talked about the physicalness of Arkansas against South Carolina. All of a sudden now, it has been turned around at least the last two plays with the Gamecocks coming up with a more physical presence along the line of scrimmage. Well, we talked about great quarterbacks in Arkansas history. Let's go to Todd Ellis, who threw for 49 touchdown passes here and almost 10,000 yards. Todd? Thanks, guys. One of the difficult things for these Carolina defensive ends is in this offense, you have got to play the dive on the option game. But then again, you can't get turned and, and get hooked inside when they run the sweep. And it's putting a big strain on the Carolina defense right now. Thanks, Todd. From the 10-yard line, third down goal to go Arkansas. 7.54 and counting. Time left in the first period. Split backs for the first time tonight. Two receivers near side. Lunny back to throw. Has time short across the middle. Caught behind Malone, but it is not enough. And that brings up a fourth down play for the Arkansas Razorbacks and a decision 
for Danny Ford. The throw was behind Oscar Malone. I don't know that he would have picked up the first down if the ball had been on the money. South Carolina's defense read this perfectly. Honey taking a long look. Malone coming over the middle. As you said, the ball was behind him. I don't think he could ever gotten to the corner. There you see South Carolina's defense just waiting on him. They certainly were. And what the Gamecocks were in, they were in a zone coverage at that particular time. And uh, Tony Watkins came up and made the stop. Lance Ellison, who was 0 of 3 in field goals last week, attempts a 23-yarder. It is blocked in a live ball. South Carolina has turned in a sterling defensive effort, their second great effort of the night, and they keep the Hogs out of the end zone with 7.01 to play in the first period. Well, this is exactly what the Gamecocks were hoping to get. They needed some sort of big play to turn the momentum in their favor. And they just got it. That's a wonderful presence as they broke in on top of the place kicker and knocked the ball away. I thought for a minute that Ellison may have taken a little bit too long, but give credit to South Carolina. The two guys came over the top. I think it may have been Ronnie Smith who blocked the kick or either Aubrey Brooks. South Carolina will have it for the second time offensively, and they'll work from their own 23-yard line. Charlie Mack coming in. One of the big question marks for Arkansas was the kicking game. There's a breakdown in the kicking game for Arkansas. Really hurt them. It hurt them all last season, and it's starting hurting them here at the start of this season. And Charlie, that's just exactly what you alluded to before the uh, field goal took place. They've really had their problems early on. Todd Ellis directing traffic has, has some confusion, Keats and he also has Robinson. They got a flip-flop now. Out of the gun. First and ten for South Carolina. Tannehill taking a look and firing it. And it's broken up. Intending it for Cates. Broken up by Mark Smith, number 44. The sophomore from Webb City, Missouri. That's a situation where Tannehill is trying to throw past the coverage. But the coverage is too good. And he shouldn't have let that one go. Mark Second Smith. down 10. Excuse me, Charlie. Mark Smith could not have played that any better. South Carolina getting the big break that they need. Arkansas needs to make something happen defensively. Arkansas with four men up on the line of scrimmage. Now they back off two linebackers. Going to have a three-man rush. And there's Tannehill. Firing. Got a man open over Robinson's head. Threw it between two defenders. Trying to throw it in the hole there. But the ball sailed on it. And so that will bring up third down now for South Carolina. Tannehill a bit puzzled. That's the second time that he's had a bad snap. The last series one was up high over his head. That one he had to reach down and grab off the ground. Marcus Robinson's a big guy at 6'4", and he can get up into the air to make that circus catch. But that ball was not thrown on the alley-oop type of situation. It was more of a line shot. More difficult to make that catch. Tannehill 2 of 5 throwing for 4 yards. And there's on the seat of his pants at the 15-yard line, and it's fourth down. He was in a hurry to get back in the pocket, lost his footing. One thing we might point out about South Carolina, Charlie, is they lost their starting center last week, and they're starting a true freshman in Paul Beckwith. Coming on the punt for South Carolina, Derwin Jeffcoat, who kicked it awfully low on the last time out, and that gave Arkansas a great field position at the Gamecock 47. South Carolina defense dug in and blocked the field goal attempt of 23 yards off the foot of Lance Ellison. From the one-yard line, Jeff Coat will kick it away to Carl Kidd. No rush. Good kick this time. Very good kick by Derwin Jeff Coat. Fielded on a fair catch at the Arkansas 47 and a half yard line. So they'll have good field position once again. Well, Arkansas basically, Ray, has been in business here. They've had field position. They've had an opportunity to get the ball in the end zone, only to have it shoved back in their face on the uh, on the block of the field goal opportunity. On the other hand, South Carolina has had terrible field position, and they have been unable to move the football with any efficiency against Arkansas. This is a situation where Arkansas dodged a bullet, and they need to do something with it. Well, South Carolina did a heck of a job getting its defense together. It's showing it early on. We've got six minutes to go in the opening quarter and nobody scratched. Lunny with a give off to his tailback. That is Marius Johnson, the junior out of Houston, Texas, who is dropped after a gain of about a yard and there's a fumble and South Carolina has recovered. It is Nate Campbell who recovers the fumble. Number 45. Let's take another look. 
Well, that's what happens here. The handoff, no running room. Good job defensively. And 44, Robert Smith with the initial hit. And then the ball squirted free. Thus, the opportunity now for South Carolina. Ball is at the Arkansas 48. Marius Johnson made the cutback for Arkansas, but never switched the ball to the other arm, and somebody was able to get a hat on it. There it is, and the man who recovers it is number 45. Aubrey Brooks. Right up the middle, short yardage. So Brooks, if we saw it correctly on the block field goal by Allison, we think he blocked that kick, and now he has a big fumble recovery. Well, they've made a quarterback substitution, and we anticipated this. Blake Williamson now in the lineup as Steve Tannehill gets an opportunity to survey the situation and take a little rest. Williamson, the junior from Anderson, South Carolina, shoulder surgery in the spring, drops back to throw, and he'll take a sack at the 46-yard line. It'll be Conley, 94, the 6'5", 217-pound junior out of Chicago, Illinois, who gets his third sack of the season. Third down. Steve Conley, a very interesting story. He came to Arkansas. His brother is a former gold medalist, Mike Conley. Let's go down to the sideline now to Joe Ferguson. Talking about a, a crowd being in the ball game when the Razorbacks had the ball inside the 10, the crowd did as much as the defense did to help stop them there. The crowd's into the game. They know what they're looking for. Third down and long shotgun for Williamson. Steps up in the pocket. Now comes out running, and he'll be dragged down at the 46-yard line. Fourth down, no gain on the play. And once again, it's 94, Stephen Conley. Fourth down. Well, here's a situation again where South Carolina has an opportunity to finally have decent field position and to do something, and it's three and out. You would never think of Steve Conley as a defensive end when he first came to Arkansas. He's put on 25 or 30, 25 or 30 pounds on a 6'5 frame, and he is tough. He's got great quickness on the outside. Jeff Coat to punt. Two safeties now back for Arkansas. Carl Kidd is back deep. Dean Peavy is alongside of him. Peavy will field it at the 27. Shakes one tackler, gets to the wall. Far sideline, tries to cut back. Takes a jarring tackle from behind and gets it across the 45 to the 46. You wonder how long can South Carolina's defense hang on and stay on the field, Jim? Well, this is a situation, Charlie Mack, that they struggled with special teams against Georgia. And once again, you see it right here. First tackler missed. Then he gets to the outside, and then finally, another tackle is missed. You can't miss those opportunities. Finally, it's two crimson shirts that knock him down. Again, great field position for the Arkansas Razorbacks. The worst field position they've had is at the 35-yard line on the opening kickoff by South Carolina. Big hit. Ball goes off right guard to Oscar Gray, rammed by Ronnie Smith, number 50. Oscar Gray. And there is Chris Rump, young man who's playing with an ankle injury. Let's take another look. This is Arkansas's big fullback, Oscar Gray. On the last series, Carlton Calvin was shaken up. We'll probably see him back in the ballgame. But I think Arkansas has done a good job with the running game, and I think they've got to pass it up, maybe go deep to Metters. Second down, 10 from the Hogs' 47-yard line. Here's a pitch to Malone with a seam. Big opening there and takes a shot at the 40-yard line. First down Oscar for Malone. Arkansas, Not hit by carry. Tony Watkins, a strong safety. Tony Watkins on the south. Lenny, as we said, Six an excellent option quarterback. He would love to play in a system where you just drop straight back, but that's not the no offense Arkansas runs. Watch Malone cut back against the green, and you'll see big number 61, Pat Baker, get it his way. He's standing there. If he blocks a guy, Arkansas might score. That's why the coaches tell you, keep giving that good second effort, get downfield, and hit somebody. 2.55 to play first quarter. Arkansas and South Carolina Territory looking at first and 10 from the Gamecocks 41. Quick pitch is to Malone. Cuts back. Now tries to swerve outside. South Carolina plays it beautifully at the 39. It's just a gain of a couple on the play and brings up second down and eight. The tackle was made by Aubrey Brooks, number 43, the junior out of Sumter, South Carolina. Tony Watkins also there. We talked about Watkins being the leading tackler in the game against Georgia, and right now he's uh, accumulating similar stats here in the first quarter of play. From the 39 of South Carolina. Looks like his hand could be bothering him. Three-man rush. 
Linebackers off along with the corners. Lunny, the pitch back, bad pitch. South Carolina may get this one. It'll be scooped up. And South Carolina is in business. Number 93, Stacy Evans. Ball may have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Well, that's the second big break in the game that the game talks have had. Watch this. Uh-oh, it may have been tipped right there by Evans. And not only does Stacy tip the ball, he realizes what's transpired and chases after it. And of course, being the fleet of foot at 6'2 and 262, tried to scoop it up and take it for six, only to be caught, of course, from behind. That's great individual effort on South Carolina's part. What the Gamecocks have to do now, they have to get the ball in Brandon Bennett's hand. That is the penalty coming up now, or what are they going to do here? Brad Scott is out on the field talking with one of the officials, and they're going to mark this one back. Let's see what the officials come up with. Brad Scott is hot as a $2 pistol. Well, you rarely win when you talk to the guys in the striped shirts, so let's see if Brad uh, has any success pleading his case. And we'll hear momentarily how the officials size this one up. We'll hear from the referee, Astro Sizemore. Well, he must have had some input because they're walking back toward midfield. It'll be at the 48-yard line. South Carolina keeps possession. They would like to have had it in Arkansas territory. They won't get it there, but they do have it on the fumble recovery by 93 Stacy Evans. Here's Tannehill back in the ball game at quarterback. Give is straight up the gut and now into Arkansas ter to territory to the 48. Waylon Wishon makes the tackle for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Let me just give you some quick clarification on what transpired before that play. Uh, you, on the fumble, you can recover the muff, but you cannot advance it. So that's why they moved the ball back to where the ball was knocked down and that first ball on it. Or first picked up, and then he advanced it down the field. Second and seven. Tannehill wants to gun it. Got a man open far side. Caught. No, they say he trapped it. And he's living on the far sideline. Terrell Harris. Terrell Harris. Thought he had it. Incomplete. It's third and seven. Here's another look. All right, watch it right there. You see the bounce just before it gets into his hands. And the official right on it. That's a very good call. Third down seven. Here it comes with a gun. Steve Tannehill with a wide set. Sprints right. Trying to get a block. Gets it. Fires on the run. Drop at the 40-yard line. So that brings up fourth down. Terrell Harris dropped it. Six catches last week, but he can't find the handle tonight. And Harris paid the price. He was really decked at the end of that play by Dean Peavy, number 10 for Arkansas. Well, Steve Tannehill has time. He got protection. And the ball was there, and Harris is going to have to hang on to that football if the Gamecocks are going to have success in advancing it down the field. Derwin Jeffcoat on to punt once again. Twin safeties back. Peavy along with Kidd. 128 to go first period. Kick ought to get pretty good coverage. Wisely, Kidd will get away from it. Takes a South Carolina roll, just gets into the end zone. Number 24 for South Carolina. Couldn't quite get to it. Tony Watkins. Arkansas, first down from the 20. Well, that one was like a rocket launch. He had that one up so high. And it did take two bounces right around the three and then the two-yard line. They just couldn't get somebody down there quickly enough to stop it before it went into the end zone. That's a prime case of the punter almost out kicking the coverage, although South Carolina should have down that inside the five. And the player that was down there is hearing about it on the sideline right now. Oh, absolutely. Now. Looked as though it might get good coverage, but the punt really sailed. It didn't hang up. And it looked like he was going to take a South Carolina bounce. Charlie, this is one of those games where you get the feeling something's getting ready to explode here one way or the other. Mike Cherry, number 18, the sophomore from Texarkana now will sit behind center for Arkansas, and there's a pitch to Johnson, and he is knocked down dead in his tracks. Chris Rump getting up off the bottom of the pile with help from Stacy Evans. Nothing wrong with Arkansas starter Barry Lunny Jr. Coming in, Danny Ford said, yes, I will play two quarterbacks. He did last week against SMU. He'll do so tonight against South Carolina. If you rate the two quarterbacks, Cherry's probably the better passer. He's the pure dropback passer. 
Arkansas blessed with three very good quarterbacks, very experienced. Lunny, Cherry, and then there's Jason Allen, who is a senior, who has eight career touchdowns and has thrown for over 1,000 yards at Arkansas. Just 40 ticks left in the first quarter. Play fake. Here's Cherry in trouble and sacked at the 13-yard line by Stacy Evans, who is having quite a ball game. He's got two sacks tonight. Well, not only does Evans have the sacks, he also had the deflection and the fumble recovery. Now, you're going to watch here. Look at everybody get in on top, and then it's Evans who closes the door on Cherry. That's not what Mike Cherry does best. You know, he does not like to really throw the football on the run, and that's the situation that Carolina put him in that time. Seven-yard loss, third down and 17 coming up. Terry having a hard time hearing. Well, the officials stepping in. I think they want to. Uh, That's the end the of ball. the first quarter. We are scoreless after one. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pretty interesting first quarter of play. You've seen some, I think, good defensive play. And offensively, neither team seems to be able to get on track. I don't know if it's a question of maybe getting un untracked offensively as it is both defenses I think are playing exceptionally well other than the one offensive thrust in which Arkansas had which led of course to the block field goal attempt uh, you take the breakdown in the kicking game that's been a big problem for Arkansas let's go back down on the field check in with the guys down there Todd Ellis thanks guys right now this first quarter was dominated by both defensive lines Carolina doing a very good job of controlling the option game so far, but I am totally impressed with the Arkansas front four. They're giving that freshman center, Paul Beckwith, a hard time. As you guys know, snapping out of the shotgun is a lot more difficult when you got that nose guard right on you. And even though they're in the 4-3, Arkansas is playing them right on Paul Beckwith a bunch. Well, that was going to be one of the key matchups to see how the freshman Beckwith would do against Arkansas's front. And you just heard Todd Ellis saying early on he's losing the battle. Personally, I think Kenny Hill's a bit rattled because of the problems with the center. I think he's a little out of sync because of that. From the 13-yard line, Arkansas, third down and long, third and 17. Two wideouts far side, one to the near side. Cherry in relief of Barry Lunny, Jr., First play, second quarter. Again, we have no score. And there's a fumble by Cherry, and they're digging for it at about the 14-yard line. Stacy Evans is saying it's Carolina's ball. It looks as though it's Arkansas, though. So it is. And it's fourth down hall. So Matt Waite will come on to punt. Fourth down. There's another look. Cherry just lost the handle coming out from under the center. Tried to come out in a hurry. Tony Nagy for Arkansas on the recovery. There's a look at Danny Ford, the 46-year-old head coach, and there's a look at Matt Waite. Single safety back for Carolina. Here comes a rush. He just gets it off. Somebody got a piece of it. Toby Cates will watch it roll across the 50, go out of bounds at the 46-yard line of South Carolina. We've been talking about field position all night. South Carolina has excellent field position now. Well, this is a situation where all of a sudden the game has kind of turned into a game of miscues. You have guys not catching the football for South Carolina, and then you have for our, the Razorbacks, guys not getting the clean snap from center and the ball laying loose on the ground. So right, it's, it's just one miscue after another. Wait showed a lot of poise, I thought, for a freshman. I mean, they hear these guys coming in after him, and he doesn't panic. He could have rushed in a hurry and tried to kick it. We've got a great look at it from the end zone camera. He took a little bit too long. I know that's slow motion, but I think Danny Ford would probably like to see him get it, get it away a little quicker than that. Ladies and gentlemen, and the rush the came from right up the middle. There are no pass out tickets available. They have the rushing yards. South Carolina with a minus Ten in Arkansas with 39 rushing yards, a lot different from last week against SMU, huh? What really surprised me so far in this ball game is how few, few times that Bennett's touched the football. I was just going to say, you take a look at that stat at minus 10. The very first play of the game, we touched on that, how many times he was going to be in pass patterns. That's exactly what they did. They went with a little flare, little screen pass. That's the last time we've seen it. Bennett carried 19 times for 120 yards last week against Georgia. He's an excellent receiver career-wise. He's got 24 touchdown catches uh, at the University of South Carolina, and the career record's only 33. Now you have to get the ball into that guy's hands. There's no question about that. From the 46th of the Gamecocks, first and 10. 
You see what the adjustment South Carolina has made here. They've got the quarterback up under center now. Want to make sure that he's got the handle. Quick count. It goes to the tailback, Brandon and he Bennett. gets a half yard at most, and there it is to Brandon Bennett. Tackle made by number 42 linebacker Vincent Bradford. Sophomore to Malvern, Arkansas, was drafted in the third round by Detroit and played three seasons of minor league ball. It will be interesting now to see if Arkansas can line up nose-to-nose, toe-to-toe with South Carolina and stop their running game if that's what they want to go with. And here's what you do now. You go with some play action and bring Bennett out into a little slot area and get the ball into his hands on a short pass. Second and nine, Tannehill with a play fake. Got time, guns it, man open, caught Robinson, first down South Carolina. Well, Marcus Robinson. It wasn't Bennett, but it was Robinson that they went to. They did go with play action that time to freeze the rushers just for that brief moment. Kane was 13. But they did fake to Bennett and freeze the linebackers. Yes. That's what opened things up. Yeah, Monty Means that time with the, with the catch. Oh, that was Means, excuse me, instead of Robinson, 88. Means number 80. First down, Gamecocks. No score yet. 13-27 to play. Swing pass comes out to Bennett with a blocker in front. And a great hit there at the 40-yard line, the line of scrimmage, and Bennett can only muster a yard as he took a big pop there from Vincent Bradford, who played off the block and made the stick. The coaches teach those tackling drills, and they say, hey, guys, you got to get that head gear right in the chest. you got to bust them, and you can't play this play much better than Vincent Bradford played this one. He did slide off his shoulder a little bit. He got some inside help, but he made that initial contact. Calvin Owens in now at wide receiver number 82 out of the gun. Tannehill on second down and nine from the 39 of Arkansas. Tannehill looking, looking, pump faking, firing, incomplete. I think he just threw it in an area there to get rid of it. I thought he put, I thought he panicked just a little bit there. He, he had plenty of room to, to move around a little bit, and he, he could have run out of the pocket with it. Also, when you're a wide receiver and you see your quarterback scrambling, you have to break off your route and come back to help him. And that didn't take place on this particular pattern. See, he thinks somebody's going to break off the route and come back. There's no there's receiver anywhere. There. There's a receiver about six yards to the right of the screen there. Third down, nine, Tannehill. Rush from the outside, he gets away from it, swings it out far side, Bennett, Bennett gets it across the 35 to the 33, and it looked as though Brandon was getting ready to take a hit instead of trying to step it downfield. It looked like he thought he was going to get hit. This is not sour grapes, but South Carolina got a big break that time. Conley had good pressure come from the other side, and the guy grabbed him and rode him to the ground. Yeah, that was a, that was a big time grab. We all saw it. 32, Spencer Brown tripped Brandon Bennett up. It'll be fourth down and three. And here comes number 10 for South Carolina. Out. He will hold. That's Blake that Williamson. is Blake Williamson. And here will be a field goal attempt by number 19, Marty Simpson, senior from right here in Columbia. Former Parade All-American by USA Today. 49-yard kick to give South Carolina the lead. They will fake it. Williamson trying to stiff arm his way out of trouble. Bobbles the ball, goes down. Arkansas will have it at the 47-yard line. I had it on the tip of my tongue. Look out for the fake here. I know you can second guess all you want to, but Marcus Adair right on top of him. He smothered it. On the defense. Tune in to Carolina Cross. Well, you know what? That's an excellent rush that time by Arkansas. There was just too much pressure on there, and Williamson never even had an opportunity to look downfield. Look, he's already got white shirts in his face just as he picks up the football. He's in trouble immediately. Aaron Lenny back in at quarterback. Excuse me, excellent defensive play by Marcus Adair. From the 47, Arkansas in the scoreless game with 11.44 to go. Second quarter in Columbia, South Carolina. Barry Lunny back to throw. The left-hander going to gun it long. Go for the home run ball. And there is a penalty marker thrown at the 20-yard line. A lot of folks there. Five, six players to be exact. The flag came down before the ball ever got to the intended receiver. And this one could be flagged the number five, Terry Cousin, the sophomore out of Miami. Let's see. Pass interference against South Carolina. So 15 yards will be walked off from the line of scrimmage, and that will give Arkansas first down. That had to be a busted play for Arkansas. There were two receivers right on top of each other. The interference that came from neither one of those, but it had to be a busted play. And you had too many guys uh, converging into one area. So look how many people are in that one area, Ray. Interference at the bottom of your screen, though. 
But as you, as you said, we had two receivers running the same route. From the 38 and a half yard line of South Carolina, the defense, which has been solid all night, will have to come up with some big plays here. Lunny moves in his tight end. Carl Johnson, 84, tight on the right side. The option goes that way. Lunny trying to look for running room, gets it to the 34 yard line. Hmm. So it will be second down now after Lunny picks up about five on the play. Lunny made the option look easy that time. And you look at it from way up here where we are up in the stands, it looks like, gee, you, you should have seen that hole if it was there as soon as you came out from under center. But, it, but he doesn't have that kind of advantage that we do. But he had to make a decision in a split second. You see all the Gamecocks chasing on the play. They were all fooled. They let him come in on the far side. And then Lunny goes the opposite direction. Second down along five. Lunny give to the first man through the big fullback to the 31 yard line looks like Oscar Gray and the tackle by Stacy Evans. I think for Arkansas to leave here tonight with a victory they have to get points out of this series. Oh, Beg your pardon that is Carlton Calvin on the carry 39 not 31 and there's a look at Danny Ford in his 13th year as a head coach 102 wins 34 losses four ties a winning percentage of 74 percent former head coach at Clemson won a national championship there. He is four and two against South Carolina in this stadium and eight three and one overall. Lunny, quick pitch, bad pitch to Oscar Malone, and he'll lose back to the 40. So that brings up fourth down, and there's another bad pitch by Arkansas. Well, what have we talked about so far in the first half of play? It's been one mistake after another. Here's another mistake right here. Actually, he should have had that ball. That was right in his hands. Took his eyes off of it. So it's fourth down and about 12. Ball at the 40 yard line of South Carolina. 950 remaining second quarter. Danny Ford can't be a happy camper right now. Well, I don't think Brad Scott is either, to be honest no. with you. Arkansas is going to let the 25 second clock run out, I believe, here and uh, take the five yard penalty in with hopes of downing the ball inside the, the 15 or 10 yard line. You know, I think most coaches, Ray, can deal with interceptions and, and they can deal with 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 plays which are fluke plays like being tipped and then intercepted and things like that but what really gets at their craw is when players continue to make mental errors which we have seen in tonight's game that was just poor execution on Arkansas's part between Lenny and Malone Malone should have had it I, the ball, he led him just a little bit too much with it if nothing else he should have caught the football and, and tripped and fallen on it <laughs> fourth down Arkansas wait on to kick single safety for the Gamecocks Gamecocks going for the run back and a bad kick by weight and a bad bounce and so South Carolina will have the football around the 23 24 yard line it looked as though they might get backed up inside their own 20, possibly their own 10, but the kick by weight did not give them that opportunity. And once again, the Arkansas kicking game doesn't come through. Waits a freshman out of Hot Springs, Arkansas, and he's testing the waters in college football, and he's really uh, been thrown into the fire. Last week against SMU, he punted only once, but he's been in a lot of different situations tonight, backed up on his goal line, uh, and he's had a couple of good kicks, so he's going to be a good kicker for Arkansas. Let me drop this one on you. Did you think before tonight's game that we would have played this far and not had points on the board? No, Absolutely I, not. I thought it'd be a 24-21 game either way. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Steps up, guns it, complete to Brandon Bennett. Spins out of a tackle at the 30, 35, out to the 40-yard line. Brandon Bennett, who's been stymied all night, comes up with a 17-yard gain after the short pass from Steve Tannehill. Well, we have talked about it and talked about it, and right now they are beginning to execute with Brandon Bennett. Arkansas made the mistake of trying to tackle the football this time instead of Bennett. Watch it. Oh, you're right. They did indeed go for the football. Out of the gun again. Tannehill successful on the first down play for a first down. Now here's a draw inside. Out of the gun, Brandon Bennett, who gets it across the 45 to the 48. Let's go down to the field now to Todd Ellis. Todd. 
Thanks, guys. What's been interesting in the last series with Arkansas, we saw Carolina put five men up on the line of scrimmage and bring what they call bullets. That's a pressure right on Barry Looney. He has not handled that pressure very well on the last third downs. He's put the pitch behind the running back. That'll be interesting. Carolina should bring that more later on in this ball game. After the gain of eight, it's second down and two. And once again from the gun, here's Tannehill. A bullet complete to Cates. Cates to the 35-yard line, another South Carolina first down, and there's another 17-yard gain, the tackle by Trent Knapp, the linebacker. Well, this is a little more of what we anticipated. We expected to see both teams going up and down the field tonight and not making miscues. All of a sudden, now they're hitting on all cylinders. That's the Steve Tannehill that SEC football fans know right there. And Cates with some nice moves. That's his longest pass of the season so far. His longest against Georgia was just 14. Yeah. Here is Brandon Bennett. Nowhere to go. Gets two, and that's all she wrote Brandon in second Bennett. and eight. I'm a Gamecocks fortunate there. Once again, a low snap. Tannehill did a good job getting the football, and that was a running play. How he got it up and got it to Bennett, I don't know. All right, so what now do the Razorbacks have to adjust to right in, in order to uh, stop this drive? I think we may see, all right, I talked to Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator, uh, earlier today, and Joe said he would not blitz as much as he did against SMU, but if Carolina's going to sit back there, we might see Arkansas blitzing a little bit more. We've not seen it this game yet. Here's a gun again. Third, or make it second and eight. Ooh. And Tannehill really takes a pop, and he'll lose a yard on the play, and it's third down and nine. Steve, Steve. Marcus Adair stuck him. You're wearing number 18, Steve. When a big guy gets near you, fall down. Don't try to stick your head into his midsection. You get hurt that way. We'll give credit where credit is due. Middle linebacker Trent Knapp did not make the tackle, but he does turn Tannehill in and get some help here. They'll give Tannehill the 33, so it's third down and eight. That's a good way for your starting QB to go to the bench. He did a great job scrambling last week against Georgia and a 10-yard scramble for a touchdown run. Thrown behind the intended receiver at the 25-yard line. And that is Thomas Pritchard, number 84. First time tonight, Arkansas has really gotten good pressure. They have sacked Tannehill a couple of times. That time, they got good pressure on him and made him throw it before he wanted to. Junior Soley in the backfield. I told you he threw it too quick. <laughs> Well, here comes another punt from Derwin Jeffcoat. And the twin safeties back once again for Arkansas. It'll be Peavy and Kidd. 6.54 remains until intermission. We're scoreless. Kidd's going to let it go, as he should. And it's just into the end zone. Took the high kick and went in there. South Carolina thought they had it. But it was into the end zone. I thought South Carolina got a bad break there. I thought the young, man, the young man, when he left to tip it back, was on the, on the field, field of play. I don't know if we have another look at that, but we, we might get a good look at it. I'm not, I don't understand why, at, at that juncture, if you're Arkansas, why, why, don't you, why, why you don't rush the punter? What do you have to lose there? Now we're checking right now to see if we can get a look at it to see if he was indeed in the end zone, and it certainly didn't look like it. Uh, let's I think what they may have ruled that when he came down, he touched the football, so he was in the end zone, possibly. Uh, Hogs on a first down call. Lunny in trouble. Tries to dance out of there and can't. Loses a yard back to the 19. Let's go down now to Joe Ferguson. Joe. The reason Razorbacks are having trouble on the pitch on the option is that South Carolina is putting a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. The pitch is coming earlier than they're used to. Found that out from the sideline. Joe, thanks very much. Joe Ferguson ate up the Southwest Conference in 1971. Led in passing statistics in practically every category. Second down. Just over 10 yards to go for an Arkansas first. Give to the fullback. Smothered. Just as he noses over the 20-yard line, Oscar Gray had no place Oscar to go. Gray. Hank Campbell hit him first, the junior from Charleston. As Don Meredith used to say, that superstar old momentum has swung here in this ball game. South Carolina has things going their way right now. They would love to stop Arkansas here and get the football back with good field position with under five minutes to go if they were to get it back after this series, if, if it were to end here in a couple of plays. Gamecocks right now playing maybe the best defense that they have played thus far in this game. They have been rock solid on both plays. Brad Scott's got to be tickled to death with the way they're playing deep. 
Third down, 10, Arkansas, with a spread set, Lunny. Hangs tough, throws complete to J.J. Meadows for the first down after the 33-yard line, and a gain of 13. Tackle by Lee Wiggins, 27. He stood in there awfully tough to gun this football. First down. Lunny will take a lick. He is not gun shy. Hung into the pocket. The little guy Metters is a speedster. Scored twice last week against SMU on passes from Lunny. One of 29, another of 79 yards. He'll leave the ball game for a breather. First down, Hogs with just over five minutes remaining in the first half. Lunny on the sprint out. Fires. Incomplete. Coverage by Lee Wiggins. The pass intended for 25, James Perry. South Carolina again with a good defense. They had Lunny running laterally to throw the football, and it's hard to throw it that way. Absolutely, and, and in order for South Carolina to be successful, they're going to have to flush him out of the pocket and make him throw on the run. Don't give him a chance to set his feet and get comfortable back there. I think what's happened here is Arkansas's lack of uh, offense, their ability to move the football, has given South Carolina some defense some confidence after the beating they took at Georgia last Absolutely, week. Absolutely, I agree with you. Razorbacks only 59 yards of total offense with 4.57 to go, second quarter. Lunny on the option, nailed, pitches back to Malone. Malone knocked down as he crosses the 38-yard line. It'll bring up third down at about six. Nice tackle by Wiggins. Gutsy performer is the only way to describe Lunny. Here's a guy, you, you want to see a shot on a quarterback on the option? He takes it right in the kisser right here. Boom. And he'll get back up and take more. Third down and a long five, closer to six. We talked about South Carolina's defense, and what a job Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator, has done this week, along with Bobby Johns, the secondary coach for South Carolina. And it will be Arkansas timeout with 4.18 to go in the quarter. And in the hand. It has been an excellent first half of football. Arkansas has penetrated, been, had, had things going their way, got into South Carolina territory. The Gamecocks came up with a big defensive play thus far, the, the defensive play of the ball game when they blocked an Arkansas field goal attempt, Jim. You know, I, I think it, I find it highly unusual that we haven't put any points on the board, though. I really felt that both these teams would have points on the board by now, and I didn't think that it was going to be a defensive struggle. I thought for sure it was going to be an offensive display. Texas, There is our Tells the tale. 418 to go. South Carolina and with an opportunity. They would like to get the football back. The tip of the hat to Carolina, South Carolina football fans. And I hope I don't offend anybody by referring to it as Carolina. Uh, I hope that doesn't offend anybody. What they call them. Uh, a tip of the hat to football in this state. You go down the road to this other school. I'll mention it one time in this telecast. Uh, to Clemson University, uh, 80,000 at that game today, 72,000 here. You got 150,000 people on a Saturday, a beautiful Saturday afternoon watching college football. This is what it's all about. Oh, absolutely. I'm having a great time. South Carolina, a member of the Eastern Division. Arkansas, a member of the West. Though each team is in a different division, they remain as permanent opponents. Arkansas's other permanent opponent is Tennessee. South Carolina's is Mississippi State. You know, you talk about having a great time. Here we are in the booth, and we get paid to do this. That's the best part. I paid to get in the, here. <laughs> there you see the third down conversions, and this is a big call with 418 to go. Arkansas would like to keep possession and get points before the half ticks away. Lunny steps up, can't get away. He'll be knocked down. And the tackle made by 62, Eric Sullivan, the 6'2", 269-pound junior out of Lawrence, South Carolina. But that's experience at the quarterback position for Arkansas. Lunny could have thrown the football up for grabs and did not do so. Well, here comes the pressure. Look, Lunny can't only step up. He can't step outside and run away from it. When he does indeed step up, Sullivan is right there to take him down. There he is. Young man who lost 20 pounds in the offseason. Wait to kick. Here comes the rush, and it is blocked by South Carolina. And fielded at the 33-yard line, and that's where he goes down. Stacy Evans with a block kick. What a game Stacy Evans has had. Well, we talked about miscues. Drop passes, fumbles, tip balls, a block field goal. Now the block punt. Breakdown in the kicking game. Breakdown in the kicking game against Arkansas. Wait takes all day to kick to kick the football. He cannot do that. This young man has, has learned. If he didn't learn that time, he'll learn when he gets to the bench. He's got to start moving when the ball gets to him. He and, shuffled his feet that time. And Charlie talked about the uh, the kicking problems in which Arkansas had at the very beginning of the contest. 
Carolina give to the first man through one, maybe two yards. The clock running with 3.32 and counting. Time left in the first half. Marcus Adair, number 50, the junior out of Memphis on the stop for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Marcus the young man Adair. who transferred from the Air Force Academy and when he gets out of school wants to own his own law firm. Well, if the Gamecocks are going to make some noise, they got to do it here in the final three minutes of this half. Carolina on a second down and a short seven ball at the 29 yard line. Tannehill with time fires it complete to Brandon Bennett. Bennett lowers his head and goes down at the 15 yard line. It'll be a gain of 14 yards. The tackle by Tracy Cantlope, the cornerback for the Hall. Carolina doing a good job matching the, the, the good running back to match Bennett against the middle linebacker Knapp, and that's no matchup in an open field. Beautiful protection by the South Carolina offensive line and great poise by Tannehill to wait until Brandon, Brandon Bennett got open. And they kept 39. Stanley Pritchard in the backfield. He threw a key block to give Steve Tannehill more time to make that completion. Here's a give on the draw of the shotgun to Brandon Bennett, and he rambles down near the 20 yard line. Tackled by Dean Peavy, cornerback, senior out of Montgomery, Alabama. Well, and mixing it up extremely well here with the run and the pass. Right now, though, you do something to keep the ball in Bennett's hands. You run some play action and give him a little flare, maybe a little screen set up. Even though you're close to the goal area here, you try to come up with a little trickery and make it happen. I fake it to Bennett and roll out with it in wide open field here. Out of the gun to give to Brandon Bennett. No, the fake and the pass is complete and inside the five yard line down to the two, Toby Cates with a great second effort. It is first down, goal to go, Gamecock. What they did is they used Bennett as the decoy and it worked perfectly that time for the Gamecocks. You know you got to freeze the linebacker for this kid again. They froze him right there because Bennett carried off the fake extremely well, and Cates was wide open and nearly snaked his way for six. That's a play I drew up on the chalkboard. I just had him coming a little further out with it. <laughs> Three tight ends for South Carolina, ramming it up the middle for the score. It is Stanley Pritchett, the 6'1", 230-pound fullback, the junior out of College Park, Georgia. Carolina draws first blood. Well, we talked about the situation as far as the offense having that momentum and how well they had mixed their plays. This is just their straight dive. Mano a mano. It's me against you. And this time the Gamecocks win that battle. The way this game is going, this is a big extra point. <laughs> You're right. Out of Jeff Colts hole, Reed Morton will kick it. He is three of three on the year. Crowd is hushed, a minute 55 to go, first half, and it is right down the middle, and South Carolina scores first in this defensive struggle. They lead it with 1.55 to go in the second quarter, seven to nothing. You know, Charlie, this is a game, and we talked about it here so far in the first half, of having mental mistakes. All of a sudden, the big break comes. Arkansas's defense cannot contain the Gamecocks offense after Arkansas had made that big error. And this time, the Gamecocks are efficient offensively. They don't fumble. They don't have a receiver drop any passes, and they get the ball into Bennett's hands. And on the scoring drive, five plays, 32 yards, took them a minute, 44, and Pritchard takes it in from a yard out. South Carolina getting excellent field position for the simple reason that they blocked an Arkansas punt. They have what? Blocked one tonight, partially blocked another, and blocked a field goal. The breakdowns in the kicking game killed Arkansas a year ago. Danny Ford spent all of Monday morning's practice. Arkansas practiced twice on Monday, I believe. And they spent all the time working on the kick day, kicking game, and it's totally fallen apart here in the first half. And you know, they had, meaning the Gamecocks, had all kinds of difficulties, special teams, in their first game. And during this past week, they really, really worked hard on special teams playing. It's paid dividends tonight. Marty Simpson, number 19, to kick it away. Twin safeties back for the Arkansas Razorbacks. It'll be Meadows at the four-yard line. Tries to cut back in and his nail as he crosses the 20 out to about the 22-yard line. A minute 50 left until halftime. The tackle by Scott Moritz. If I'm Arkansas, I would just love to get to the locker room right now. Although there's a minute 50 left in the half, I would love to get to the rock locker room trailing seven to nothing. 
I mean, the momentum has really swung here. All right, let's see exactly now what the Razorbacks decide to do, and let's see what the Gamecocks have in store defensively. They have indeed now taken control of this game. Arkansas with one timeout left in the first half. Give us to the tailback Malone, who manages to fight his way for a yard and a half. If you're an Arkansas fan sitting at home saying, what's the difference this week and last week? Last week, Arkansas's offensive line dominated SMU. South Carolina getting tremendous penetration right now. Ask me that question again. Ask me that question. What's, What's the, the difference in a week ago? They played SMU. <laughs> I know there's a little difference there. <laughs> there you see the big stick from 43, Aubrey Brooks. Arkansas has used its last time out, I think. And senior citizens. We'll pass along a couple of afternoon scores from the Southeastern Conference. Kentucky a winner last week and home against Louisville. They had a record crowd of about 59,000 in Lexington, and they headed to Gainesville thinking they had a good chance to beat number two Florida. No way, Jose. Florida over Kentucky this afternoon, 73 to seven. Alabama came on strong down the, down the stretch to beat Vanderbilt and Tuscaloosa, 17-7. Interesting point about these two schools, 876 miles separate them. And also, when South Carolina has lost its opening game at home in the past, they usually have bounced back in the next game at home going 6-2 and two with that scenario. Well, the Gamecocks uh, felt that they played well enough to win against Georgia, despite the fact that the Bulldogs ran up over 500 yards against their defense they were in the game Tannehill was taking them down the field obviously got picked off at the end they felt they had the opportunity to win the game they have built on top of that and have come in a confident football team tonight from the 21 of Arkansas the Hogs with a minute 35 to go in the second here's a pitch back to Malone he's being chased down gets away Malone with a great effort across the 25 to the 27 yard line and he's tripped up by Chris Rump, number 58, the senior from St. Matthew, South Carolina, who is playing with an ankle injury and was questionable for this game. Oscar Malone being bottled up tonight. Had a great game last week against SMU. This is just outstanding individual effort on Malone's part. He gets a pretty decent block right there, slips off the defender, gets to the outside. Everything he got from there on was on his own. Malone came into this game for his career, averaging five and a half yards per carry. South Carolina's defense has done quite a number on him tonight. Third down and short. Pitches back to Malone once again. Gets to the corner, gets out of bounds right at the marker. That is a big first down if Malone got it, and I think he did, because Arkansas would have had to punt with about 40 seconds left. We'll take another look at it. Luddy just quick pitch back, and Malone getting some good blocking. Fullback trying to push somebody outside. Malone goes outside. He got that on his own. Oh, they say he didn't get it. Okay, I stand corrected. I think he's just short. Just it, inches short. Well, his knee must have touched down because I thought he, maybe he went out of bounds before that. Terry Cousins, a cornerback, number five, making the hit on the far side. So Arkansas, with 44 ticks left, will punt it away. If you're the Hawks, you're saying, oh, no, I've got to punt it again. Here right. comes Carolina. That's right. And with 44 ticks left, go after it. And they are. This time, they don't get there. Nice kick. Cage at the 32. Needs to cover the ball up and go down. But he doesn't. He stays on his feet. And you know that Coach Brad Scott would certainly like to see him cradle the ball now with 31 ticks left in the first half. Well, here's the situation. They did indeed go after for the punt block. When you don't get it, all that's looking at you are a white shirt. You don't have anybody around to help block for you. So you're exactly right, Charlie. You catch the football, immediately get down, and save some time on the clock and see if Tannehill wants to try to put more points on the board. If he'd have gotten out of there, his teammates would have given him a new nickname, maybe calling him Houdini. That's right. Well, I can't really see South Carolina sitting on it here if they're going to run out of the shotgun. Oh, I think you got to, though. I think you take a real gamble if you try to gun it. Though they do have two timeouts left. It's off to Bennett. He's tripped up. Great tackle. Now at the 20 yard line by Junior Soli, the nose guard. The junior out of Columbus, Georgia, preseason all SEC play. Junior Soli. They'll let it run now. That's a big play for Arkansas. Soli, if Bennett picks up five, ten yards there, and there's some time left on the clock after that, then you see Teddy will go back and try to go deep, make something happen. 
Two o'clock. South Carolina will sit on it more than likely as running into the game is fullback Stanley Pritchett. Here's another look at that play. See, they were hoping to surprise him, and there was no surprise. That's a great individual effort. So you have to make that block. Delvin Herring, the 320-pounder out of Jacksonville, Florida, can't cut solely off at the pass, so to speak. Maybe he should weigh 300. Better drop 20, quick. There's a look at Brad Scott, the new head coach at South Carolina, came in from Florida State and assisted under Bobby Bowden for 11 years. The last four years, he was the offensive coordinator for the Seminoles. He has put in that old offense here, and South Carolina fans are really excited about things. Just 39 years old. In 1992, when he was at Florida State, he recruited four of the top players in South Carolina to Florida State. You don't think that had anything to do with them hiring him, do you? Well, certainly <laughs> not. Quite a recruiter and a great offensive mind. I think he's going to be a tremendous head coach. Here is Tannehill. Throw it long. They're throwing away. One of the two. And hold on to the football, yeah. and that's what he does. Tannehill. I don't think he or Lunny will win a foot race. Junior Soli. <laughs> Junior Soli again there with a defensive gym. And South Carolina will go into the locker room with the only point scored here in the first half. Lead it 7 to nothing. Like I said earlier, if I'm Arkansas and I'll go to the locker room after those breakdowns of the kicking game and I'm behind only 7 to nothing, I should feel fortunate. Well, both coaches will go in. They'll have a conversation with their clubs. And I think, to be perfectly honest with you, they're not going to stress the first half. They're going to stress, guys, you have to concentrate. You can't have those mental lapses, which we both saw in the first half of play. If you're Arkansas, you, your adjustments you make are, first of all, with your offensive line. What's, what's South Carolina doing to, to take the option away from you? And if you're South Carolina, on the other hand, you've got to do some, some work with your center back with uh, Junior Soley's wearing him out up front. Uh, he's having problems snapping the football. So you go in with that young man, and, and you make sure that you uh, do something about his confidence to restore his confidence. Uh, if you're Arkansas, you just got to suck it up and come back strong the second half you can make those adjustments all right when the second half then do you think you'll see the Razorbacks continue with the ground game because they did have success when they ran the option and they made the pitch and the back did indeed hang on to the football or when Lenny faked the pitch and kept it they did indeed pick up big chunks of yardage the ground game is Arkansas's bread and butter and I don't think that you will see Arkansas get away from that they did make an adjustment there in the second or, or late in the second quarter in the fact where they started pitching the football a little bit more than they did running the option well Razor welcome back live to Williams Price Stadium Columbia South Carolina packed house here Carolina leads it seven to nothing. The only touchdown coming on a one yard plunge by Pritchett, the big fullback, and it was all defense and a lot of big plays. Here's the first. Well, watch what happens here. This, of course, is the first big play of the game, and it is the block of the Arkansas Razorback field goal attempt. So there could have been points on the board at that time, but the Gamecock defense squelches it. Here's a fake field goal by South Carolina that doesn't develop. Arkansas read it perfectly. There's a big defensive end, Marcus Adair, in the backfield for Arkansas. Now the punt block. Right up the middle came the rush. And South Carolina had wonderful field position from that point. Arkansas's punter's last name is Wait. Well, he can't wait anymore. They may change his name at the half to hurry. Hurry. And here's the only six points of the game right here is Pritchard from a yard out. And the Gamecocks were on the board. The extra point, of course, was good. And that's where we are as we get set in a few minutes for the second half of play at 7-0 South Carolina. Here are the stats, and they won't dazzle you offensively. Can you believe with a running back like Brandon Bennett, that South Carolina's rushing yardage is minus 16. That is absolutely amazing. There you see the third down conversions. Carolina was 0 of 6, yet they lead 7 0. Charlie, I think we're just about set to kick this one off. If I'm Arkansas offensively, I'm going to go with some mis misdirection here in the second half. And if I'm South Carolina, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm just going to yell at my wideouts to watch the football into your hands. Last time that man was in this stadium, he was a head coach at Clemson, and he beat South Carolina 45 to nothing. They would love to see him walk out of here a loser tonight. Coming into tonight, these were the standings. Florida annihilated Kentucky this afternoon. Alabama beat Vanderbilt. And they're the Western Division standing. Arkansas's first league game, South Carolina's second. 
Brandon Bennett will feel this one in the end zone. It'll come out to 20 on the touch. Bennett's a very dangerous man as a freshman against Memphis State now the University Touchback. of Memphis. He ran one back 99 yards and last week against Georgia Bennett Ted Reynolds. three returns for Ted 114 Reynolds. against Georgia average 38 yards a return. He does first not get to return that one. I know it's early in the second half. This is the first series but this is a big series for Arkansas's defense. They would love to give the offense some good field position. They need to stop Carolina here and contrary. It's also a big series for South Carolina's offense. You want to maintain ball control, take it down the field, and try to get something on the board and establish that you are in command of this game from the very get-go. Hand off, Bennett, big hole, great second and third effort out near the 30-yard line, close to a first down. Tackled by the strong safety, Carl Kidd. Well, we talked about Brandon Bennett in the Brandon first Bennett. half doing very little, but he starts off the second half with a big game. Well, you know, we talked about also what they had to do as far as matching up physically against Arkansas. On this particular drive, that's exactly what the Gamecocks are going to have to do. Look at the offensive line push back the defensive line. Big time blocking that time by the Gamecocks up front. Tannehill to throw on second and short. Guns it in and out of the hands of Cates. Second or third time tonight that he's had a receiver drop the football. If that first power, that's just good power football by South Carolina. If that's any indication, Arkansas is in for a, a tough second half. What Carolina did that time, instead of hesitating a little bit, they just turned quickly, gave the football to Bennett. We may see more of that here in the second half. I promise you that. Third down a yard. There you see Toby Cage stats. Two catches for 27. He dropped three in the first half. Second half just underway. Charlie Mack Alexander with Ray Tucker, Jim Brinson, and down the sidelines, Joe Ferguson and Todd Ellis. Tannehill would like to have that one back. Trying to go to Cates, overthrew him, and it was knocked down by number 44, linebacker Mark Smith. If you're a linebacker, you dream of getting in a situation like this. You see this in your dreams. Trent Knapp, Arkansas's middle linebacker, you always want a good shot at a quarterback. He got one at Tannehill that time. Well, just like that, Arkansas's defense holds. Gamecocks can't have any offensive movement down the field. They have to kick it away. Back deep is Carl Kidd. Up in front of him at the 45 of Arkansas is Peavy as Darren Jeffcoat stands on to kick. Special Snap teams important here now, Charlie. You're going to have to have good coverage, and that's a big-time punt. Beautiful kick fielded by Kidd at the 25. Looking for the alleyway. There it is. He's outside. Cuts back against the green. And he's into South Carolina territory at the Gamecock 40-yard line. The tackle by Rick Robinson. Is that a case of out kicking your coverage? Carl Kidd on the carry. It's a situation where the special teams once again break down. Look, everybody bunches up in the middle, and the seam opens up. There is nobody there. Kid does not gone. He doesn't have the vision we have here. Why he cut back inside, I don't know. He had a blocker in front of him. Uh, he is a speedster. He was a transfer out of Northeast Oklahoma. He has lots of speed out of Pine Bluff, Galloway, a senior, and they need his leadership this year. That was a 35-yard putt return by Kidd. And on punt coverage, you have to cover the field. You have to have containment on that kick returner. It's that simple, and they didn't have it. Arkansas's quarterback, Barry Lunny, talking to running back coach Looking David forward. Mitchell and head coach one, Danny four Ford. There you the see the numbers on Lunny on the night. He was 10 of 12 for better than 200 yards last week in a win over SMU. Of course, this is a different ball club. They're on the road tonight in front of hostile fans, 70,000-plus here in Columbia, South Carolina. Official count 71,542. And there is Brad Scott, offensive genius at Florida State. Charlie Mack, as we look at the stadium here, tip of the hat to, to Southeastern Conference football fans. Opening Saturday of SEC football last year, or rather last week, SEC teams played in front of better than 580,000 fans. That's why Arkansas and South Carolina elected to jump to this league. Two great additions to the Southeastern Conference. Here comes Arkansas after the 35-yard punt return by Kidd in South Carolina territory. Three down linemen for the Gamecocks. Expecting pass. Lunny on the option will pitch it back to Malone. Malone is hemmed in after he gets about three yards on the play by Tony Watkins, a strong safety. We've got a couple of players pushing each other. There's Malone gets up and uh, remind everybody of the fighting rule in the NCAA this year. Anybody involved in a fight 
is out this game, misses the next game. If you come off the bench, like if the whole team comes off, they're out for the next game. The game, the head coach also. Look at the secondary come up here. If you're a running back, you're Oscar Malone. You can't hesitate there. You got to turn it up field. Second down, seven, Arkansas. Lunny back to throw. Man open. Pass caught. What a catch at the 11-yard line by J.J. Meadows. And a penalty marker down back at the 40-yard line. And we'll wait for the officials and their indication. Generally, when it's dropped in that area, it is a holding penalty. So the pass that covered 29 yards is going to be called back. Lunny laid it out there, and the little guy ran to it. J.J. Metters, he had to come back to get it. But once again, as we said, the penalty will negate the big game for Arkansas. The Hogs have done it all night long. They've shot themselves in the foot. We have holding. On the right team, the 10 yards. We picked it up. So it will be second down and 20 for the Razorbacks, and the ball pushed back to the South Carolina 47. Well, that's obviously a big break if you're a Gamecock fan. If you're an Arkansas Razorback fan, you're cringing right now. 7-0 ball game, Carolina with 13-12 remaining in the third quarter. Spread set for Barry Lunny Jr. and company. Defense in close. Here comes the blitz by South Carolina. Lunny fires. It is caught at the 31 yard line a yard shy of a first down complete to Shannon Sidney Mike Cherry on the reception Shannon Sidney a redshirt freshman out of Russellville Arkansas which is the hometown of Corliss Williamson who was the MVP in the final four year ago this guy has breakaway speed if Lenny gets it to him on the corner he can make it a big play and he we talk about his breakaway speed Gamecocks in man coverage in the secondary that time and generally that pays dividends for the offense and you saw it on that play third down and one from the Carolina 31 Lenny hits back Malone against the grain to the 25 yard line first down Arkansas that's a gutsy call if you're Danny Ford and his offensive coordinator to get that ball on the corner as many problems as you've had tonight on the option play once again Barry Lunny takes a big shot he's going to be sore I mean really sore after this game because the Gamecocks are hitting him every opportunity that they get Danny Ford with his ties to the state of Alabama has gone in there and recruited some uh, pretty good players Oscar Malone being one of those Dean Peavy another First down and 10, Hogs. Carolina with a four man front defensively now. Give to the tailback, Malone gets it to the 21 yard line. Oscar Malone. He'll get four. Tackled by Hank Campbell, Malone. linebacker from Charleston. This is a carbon copy of what we saw in the first period for Arkansas, where the offensive line dominated. They open holes. They're doing that right now. I don't know what adjustment they made at the half, but they made one. Malone now, 13 carries for 42 yards. And the Gamecocks now are going to have to make a defensive stand right here. Carolina back to the three-man front. Now walk up a linebacker. Lunny in trouble. Looked like a busted play. He'll be swung down and dropped. By number 50, Ronnie Smith. Now, Ronnie Smith has had a pretty good ball game so far tonight. He is right on the right spot at the right time on this particular play. And you're right, Charlie, it was a busted play. Watch Lenny right here. Uh oh. The ball's up in the air. And here comes Smith. And he's got him. So a crucial third down and eight call coming up for the Razorbacks. That probably would have gotten nothing anyway going to the left. The Carolina stacked and stunned on that side. Arkansas trying to get some points on the board for the first time tonight. Lunny with a checkoff. Play clock at five seconds. Now four, three, two. The play is away. It comes a rush. Lunny stands in tough, throwing near side incomplete. Caught out of bounds by number 19, Shannon Sidney. It is fourth down on the coverage was Lee Wigan. Uh, here's a situation again where Arkansas had an opportunity to come up and possibly put points on the board as far as moving in for the end zone. But right here, you can see the pass is caught well out of bounds. Lance Ellison on to kick. That's the inexperience of the young freshman there, Sidney's part. He's got to learn to walk that tightrope. Out of the hold of Jason Allen. Ellison hasn't connected so far this season. Snap is bobbled, but the kick is away, and it is no good, and South Carolina is held again. 
That's the third time this year that Jason Allen has had problems. He had problems rotating the football and getting it set up for Allison. Well, I wonder if he heard footsteps again because the Gamecocks were straight up the middle again and they were right on top of this kick. Let's watch the snap. Oh, it's fumbled slightly there and he doesn't get the ball down clean. And there's the pressure by the Gamecocks. The ball goes over to South Carolina with 10-26 to play in the third quarter. Arkansas may spend all of next week doing nothing but working on the kicking game. Special offer on the back of your game tickets. Special offer. That was a big, excuse me, that was a big series we talked about. Arkansas and wanting to get something going here early in the half. They did it. They had the long pass play that was negated by the penalty. Sidney made the catch over here inside the 15-yard line. Stitt was out of bounds when he caught it. Arkansas can't get a break right now. Everything going South Carolina's way. Total offense now for the two clubs. Arkansas 97 yards. The Gamecocks 76. Only score came in the second period. And that was a one yard plunge by Pritchett, the fullback, after a drive of just 32 yards. Took five plays in a minute 44 off the clock. Tannehill down under. Here's a give to Bennett. Bennett over left tackle across the 25. Tackle by Trent Knapp. Well, they're going to try to establish the ground game if they can, and then try to go with some play action. And if you're going to establish the ground game, this is the guy. Second and about seven. Second down, seven. Out of the gun this time, Tannehill and company. Corners up close on the wide outs. Tannehill looks, throws short. Across the 30 to the 32-yard line, Junior Soli, the nose guard, makes the tackle for the Arkansas seven. Razorback. And that's Pritchard, who uh, was the receiver. Watch him sneak out of the backfield. And right there, Tannehill did a great job. He was the outlet receiver. As Tannehill was looking downfield, checked off on, the, on a receiver downfield, and then picked up the open man coming out of the backfield to check off the safety valve pattern, and that was Stanley Pritchard. Third down and one. Give it off inside. Very, very close. Soli is there to stuff Pritchett. We'll see where the nose of the football will rest for South Carolina. They're going to take a time out to measure, Charlie. We'll pass along some other scores from around the country today. First, we'll start with the uh, Southeastern Conference. At the half, Ole Miss putting on Southern Illinois, 35-3. 2.50 to left to go in the initial quarter in Baton Rouge, Mississippi State. Out in front, uh, the Bengal Tigers, 3-0. A lot of folks are going to be looking at this one closely. Oh, my gosh. Right on the stripe. Or short of the stripe. Short. It is short by inches. Fourth down. Always amazes me that the fans will yell, go for it. <laughs> Not in a 7 nothing ball game in your own territory at the 33. Wisely, South Carolina will kick it away. And here comes Jeff Coe. At the half, Auburn leading Northeastern Louisiana 30 to 6. Kid back to receive his last punt return, a 35 yard ramble into South Carolina territory, though Arkansas could not cash in. All right, let's see now how the special teams of the Gamecocks work out on this particular sequence. Hogs going for the run back. Beautiful kick by Jeff Coke. Kid at his own 20. Looking for that wall again. This time he can't find it. He gets it up to the 30 and goes down. Now that was much better containment. And of course the punt being angled near the outside sideline over there. It kind of shoves the, the return man kid into going into that direction. So you use the sideline also as your friend. 840 remains third quarter. South Carolina leading Arkansas seven to nothing. Here's a score that'll get your attention this afternoon. Number 16, Texas A&M, put it on 15th rank Oklahoma, 36-14. Wow. Boy, did they put it on. First down and 10 hogs from their own 30. Here comes a reverse. Give it off to Meadows. He can fly, but he's got nowhere to go. He takes a pop at the 31 from David Turnipseed, number 91, the senior out of Spartanburg, who missed the last half of last season, had surgery to repair a torn tendon in his finger. 
Well, Turnipseed stood his ground and did not take the fake as they went away from him. And also, Tony Watkins came up defensively from his secondary spot. He wasn't fooled, and he's also in on the tackle. There they are, right there. Going to give him two, make it second and eight. Mark it at the 32 of the Hogs. Lunny to throw on second down. Going long for Meadows. Can't get to it at the 35 of South Carolina. Covered pretty closely there. Intended for Meadows. We talked about the fact that we thought this would be a 24-21 game, a lot of points scored in this one. You have to give a great deal of credit to both defenses. They played their hearts out tonight. Oscar Malone had to come back to the huddle that time and tell Barry Lunny. He was a safety valve, but he was wide open in the flat. Nobody within 15 yards of him. Reggie Richardson on the coverage that time for the Gamecocks. Third down eight. Lunny back to throw. Sidesteps a man, fires complete. And after the 41-yard line, right at the first down marker, the tight end hauling it in, Carl Johnson, with a pop from Ronnie Smith, the linebacker for the Gamecocks. Uh, this could be one of these left foot, right foot spots. And we'll talk about that right after you watch the completion here. Ronnie Smith, linebacker for Carolina, is down, being attended to. It is first down. Lunny with a quick release to get that one in there. He just drilled it. There's a look at Ronnie Smith, the junior from Athens, Game Georgia, being attended down. to down on the field. Ronnie I'll tell Smith. you about Barry Lunny. And, of course, I know you know this very well, Ray. He's one tough customer. He has stood in on the pocket on several occasions and delivered the ball, been smacked right in the mouth. His story, he played uh, last spring. He elected to play baseball, and Danny Ford said, you go ahead and do so. Uh, we'll take another look at the injury right here. All right, now watch Smith come up. And he gets it caught in underneath right there and kind of rolled the ankle. We'll First get back to the Lunny story in a moment. Well, they gave him the left foot spot. So when he got the left foot spot, it was enough yardage for the first down. 7.26 to go third quarter. Carolina up 7-0. Pitch comes near side. Oscar Malone coming up on the outside and turning in a great play. Aubrey Books. The linebacker, he sniffed it out, saw it coming, took off like he was shot out of a gun and tripped him up. Well, they've seen Aubrey it so Brooks. many times that they've made adjustments, and there is Brooks knifing his way past the intended blockers and making the play. Good defensive call by the Carolina coaching staff. Uh, they shifted the guy over, and then he came on the blitz, and he was right there, and there came the pitch right in his lap. That is back in the ball game as Arkansas looks at a second down and 14 from its own 37. after the fake complete out to the 49 yard line a couple shy of a first down tackle by Tony Watkins a strong safety and Lunny took another pop back there Ray took a hard one it was complete to the tight end Johnson That's once again Carl Johnson. after he throws the football Lunny took it right Lunny in the Watkins. ribs this is a young man that elected to play baseball last uh, last spring he's a left-handed pitcher and a pretty good pitcher once he got into the end of the middle of the season and there are folks who are not sure if he'll come back for his senior year next year because he does have a future as a pro baseball player I can tell you right now Lunny gets the Ben Gay award tonight after the 12 yard gain it's third down and two for the Razorbacks at their own 49. First down Arkansas slamming over left tackle the give was to the first man through the fullback who keeps the drive alive for the Arkansas Razorbacks as they move into South Carolina territory that was Oscar Gray the senior from Houston Texas something that never shows up uh, on the stat sheet is the fact that Lunny made the right decision at the split second that time he had to, he chose to give the ball to the football and that's where he needed it to get the first down. We'll take one more look at it. Check it out. Thousand one less than that. Lunny has to make up his mind whether he's going to he reads it perfectly. 534 left in the third. Lunny back to throw his team down by seven. Swing pass out to Malone. Malone spins away from the tackle then his nail. Hit hard by Hank Campbell. 
Well, I tell you what, this South Carolina defense reads practically everything Arkansas does offensively. Well, they have some solid linebackers in Brooks, Campbell, and Smith. I mean, these guys read well, and, and they come up and they make the right plays at the right time. Oscar Malone will leave the game for Arkansas. He got his bell rung a little bit. Oh. He's not sure where he is. He's going to Disneyland. He's already there. <laughs> Marius Johnson, 22, the junior from Houston, Texas, replaces him. Last year, the Hogs' number two rusher. Second down eight from the 46 of South Carolina. Lunny on the run. Complete to Meadows at the 41, inside the 40 to the 39. He did one more yard to pick up a first down. It's third and one, the tackle by Lee Wiggins. You know, Ray, this has been a very solid drive right now by the Razorbacks as they have mixed the run and the pass extremely well. And I think they've done a little bit of uh, confusing, particularly the secondary right now in South Carolina, because now their wideouts are beginning to find the open seams. I am in total agreement with you. This is a big third and one for Arkansas. Head of about nine on the play. Just over four minutes remaining in the third. Tight end comes in close. That is Johnson. South Carolina moves him up on the line of scrimmage. Lunny down the line in the option. Has the first down and more inside the 35-yard line of South Carolina. Barry Lunny straight option down the line. I don't think he, he had any Barry notion Lunny. of pitching whatsoever. Didn't want to take a chance with a bobble, and there have been some errant pitch outs several times by Lunny. The right side of the Carolina defense has been killing Arkansas. That's a good call by the offensive coordinator. Went away from the strength of the defense. Barry Lunny, you said pitcher on the baseball team, had a 4-4 four and four record. 35 is where they'll mark it. 35 at Carolina. Three-man front for the Gamecocks. They've really mixed up their defenses. Here's a give to Marius Johnson, and he'll work his way down and crawl to about the 26. Tripped up by Benji Young, number 49, the sophomore out of Rock Hill. Well, remember we talked about Arkansas possibly being more physical. Right now, they are displaying that physicality on this particular drive. They are controlling the line of scrimmage. They're up front people. Mark it just outside the 26. Second down, and about a yard and a half to go. Give up the middle. He didn't get it. Give it off to the fullback. Met in the hole by David Turnipseen, young man who had 14 tackles against Kentucky in 1992, and in that game he had eight unassisted stops. Charlie Back, wasn't there a tur Turnipseen that played for Mississippi State forever? That's right. Were, weren't there like brothers there or something along those lines? I don't think uh, they're related, but yes, there was. 77 degrees was the game time temperature, and I'm starting to see some guys sucking a little air here on both teams. Third down, a very short one. Those with the football just inside the Carolina 26. 7-0 South Carolina leads it with 2-16 to go in the third. Give us off to the tailback. Johnson first down. Arkansas. Let's go down on the field now to Todd Ellis. Todd? Thank you, guys. I just heard you make the comment. You're seeing some fatigued players down here. Carolina's defense has been on the field a long time, and we talked about the fourth quarter factor and this big Arkansas offensive line. You get the feeling, like last year's game, they're starting to wear down the Carolina defense. We'll have to watch that as we move into the fourth quarter. First down and 10 hogs. Ball marked at the South Carolina 22. Perry goes to the far side. Meadows comes to the near side. Straight pitch. Marius Johnson with a cutback. Inside the 15-yard line where he's too shy of another first down. It's second down coming up. Here's an interesting stat on uh, as a player down on the field. We'll take another look at it. Marius Johnson, Johnson. a 5'8 junior. And he is really a good scat back. But what we're seeing here is the freshness of a new face and a new talented player in the Arkansas lineup. There's no doubt about that. That is Robert Smith down, number 44, the sophomore out of Sumter, getting his first start of the season. He did not start in the first game. Arkansas doing a good job here in the second half, Charlie Mack, and mixing things up a little bit. They don't not just sticking to their guns, sticking to that option play. You're seeing them on the quick pitch. You're seeing them on the option. You're seeing them getting on the corner, throwing the football a little bit. Let's see if we can 
see how the injury came to Smith. That's the right ankle. And watch what happens here when all the players collide. It gets caught underneath. And twisted. And Smith is now up and dragging the, uh, the ankle. Prior to this first down, Arkansas had third and one. And guys, I honestly believe that if Arkansas had not made it, they may have gone for it on fourth down. The problems they've had in the kicking game. I think game. so. I think they had to. And that's a bad sign. He tried to put some weight on it and then decided that he couldn't do it. Still attempting to do so. But he's in great pain. Second and short, second and a couple. Ball just inside the Carolina 15-yard line. Arkansas trying to get its first points of the night on the board. Last time they were down here, couldn't get it in. Blocked field goal. Or missed field goal, excuse me. Wide left. Straight pitch. Johnson gets a block in the corner. Penalty marker down. Inside the 15 to the 13. Another penalty marker flag. It'll go against Arkansas, an illegal block on the corner. Marcus Johnson. Campbell and Wiggins on the tackle. And another Gamecock getting up very slowly around the line of scrimmage. And that's turnip seed, but he's up. Illegal block. Well, Ray saw it right away. So, I've really been impressed with South Carolina's defense, as you guys have tonight. On that particular play, Arkansas. Have an illegal block. A block in the back. 15-yard penalty. Repeat the down. I think it was Perry. Yes. The split end. We'll take one more look at it, and again, Arkansas shooting himself in the foot. We did not see the illegal block, but you see the flag already there. Either Perry or Eubanks. Let's take a look here. Eubanks is nine. Eubanks, number nine, was the guy with the infraction. That pushes Arkansas back to the 30-yard line. They were looking at second down and two, and now they're looking at second down and 17. Tremendous support from the South Carolina secondary on the play. Three-man front. Expecting pass. Lunny back to throw. Swings it out. Far side. Malone back in the game has it. He's horse collared at the 27 yard line by Ronnie Smith. Well, that's good defensive Ronnie coverage Smith. that time by South Carolina. Yes, they came with some people and tried to put some pressure on Lenny, but then they spread out and covered that little flare pattern. Generally, you think this is a pretty safe pass. All right. But when you see the pass go, look how many shirts are out there. Look how many Gamecock players were in that area. There's an Arkansas player shaking up on the far sideline, and it may be Oscar Malone. He had gotten a pretty a good breather and that's the first play he'd been back Marius Johnson had spelled him for a while that does not look good he had his bell rung as Ray said a couple of plays earlier and now it's either knee or ankle I'm not sure if we will get an opportunity to see a, a young man by the name of Madre Hill a freshman out of Malvin Arkansas high school All-American he has not seen any playing time this year and I, I know Danny Ford would love to redshirt him but here you see the play you see his knee a little bit third down and 14 Arkansas's got to have it. Lunny standing tough with time. Man open across the middle. Dropped at the five-yard line. Shannon Sidney with a perfect toss could not hang on. Well, it's another case in point of what we've seen throughout this game. Perfect execution by the offensive line, by the quarterback, Lunny, and then having the wide receiver not catch the football. That hurts Lunny all day. Great job by the offensive line. Gave him all day to throw the football right on the money. And Sidney, who had to reach up a little bit, it was not exactly on the money. I can't find a handle on it. Turned his hands the wrong way to catch it over the middle. Certainly a pass he should have caught. 43-yard kick coming up for Lance Ellison would be, again, I keep saying this, Arkansas's first points. This one is wide right, and South Carolina's done it again. They've held. Well, with 37 seconds left to go in the third quarter, it is still a 7-0 Carolina advantage. And miscue after miscue after miscue. I keep thinking Arkansas is going to run out of bullets. How many times can you shoot yourself in the foot? At the 10-26 mark in this period, it was Allison on for a 40-yard kick. It was wide left. This one from 43 is wide right. That's why I'm not in coaching. I told you a second ago I wouldn't be surprised with fourth down. Of course, it was like fourth and, what, 17 or something. That, that's probably the reason they kicked the field goal. But Well, it didn't pay dividends, that's for sure. 
Boy, there's a big time tape job right there. You got it. That's Robert Smith. We won't see him again tonight in that big ice on this. Arkansas, two, two golden opportunities. They had the uh, illegal block, pushed them back 15. Sidney drops the pass uh, inside the 10 yard line. It would have been a first down. That was a 16 play drive for Arkansas that ends up with a missed field goal from Ellison. 37 ticks left in the third. Carolina hanging on to that 7 0 lead. Tannehill to throw. Pressure from behind. Ball batted down. Well, that was a good time, a big time bull rush of that by uh, the Arkansas defensive line. Everybody was in there. I'm not sure of the time of possession. That drive lasted forever. These two units here, the offense of South Carolina, the defense of Arkansas, well rested, should be. Yeah, watch Vernon Wade right here with a big paw up there to knock it down. On the top of your screen, Connolly 94, guy had two hands full of jersey. Again from the gun, Tannehill tries to get out of trouble. Fires on the run, low, incomplete at the 30. Well, that offensive line of the Gamecocks is going to have to give Steve Tannehill some time to throw the football. You don't want him having to scramble out of the pocket. You want to give him a chance to set his feet and pick out his target. Now watch right here. Tannehill is set, wants to let it go, but here comes the pressure. He's got to get out of there. Now he's on the move, and he, obviously he can't make that, uh, that pass that well on the run. And Thomas Pritchard can't hang on to it. It'll be third down and ten. Tannehill scrambling, pump faking, going to tuck it and go now, lowers his head as he's after the 33-yard line, and it'll be fourth down and four. Charlie Mack, that's a big defensive play for Arkansas for the simple reason that the Razorbacks get the football back in a hurry, and South Carolina's defense, which we talked about a little ago, a while ago, that looked like they were winded, they're right back out on the field after three plays. And look at him scramble one more time, trying to arm pump and trying to buy some time for himself. But like I said, the wide receivers have to come back and give him some help. You have to break off your pattern and free yourself so that your quarterback has an opportunity to throw the ball to you. That is the end of the third period, and Carolina hangs on to that 7 to nothing lead. And it will be most interesting, gentlemen, to see, as we've been talking about and as it's been alluded to down on the field, how long the South Carolina defense can play that hard, be that active, come up with so many big plays, and not be just extremely fatigued here in this final period. And so many people have said so much this week about Danny Ford's teams in the fourth period at Clemson and how they came back so many times that you need a pretty decent lead on them to keep them out of the end zone. Well, you know, this is a situation right now for South Carolina where their defense is going to be called upon again to save their bacon. And for Arkansas, they have had opportunities. They have moved the football, and it's just what, what Ray has indicated. They have shot themselves each time that they have had scoring opportunities. South Carolina with a great deal of momentum going into the locker room in the second half. Arkansas has done a good job here in the second half keeping the crowd out of the football game. They have got to get good field position here and get some points on the scoreboard. They're going to run out of steam sooner or later. And now you're in a situation where you have your special teams on the field. And the Gamecocks have had some difficulties with special teams play in this game. There went Jeff Coat on to kick. Last kick was a beauty. Kid back to receive. Along with PB, lots of time. Boy, he hits this one. Nose is over. Kid at the 20. Kid looking for running room. Gets out of a pile and finally shoved out of bounds around the 39 yard line. Boy, when you, <laughs> you get your mitts on him, you better hang on for dear life. He's really dangerous. Tony Watkins on the stop. Arkansas, first down. Look at these rushing yards. Arkansas with 80 on the ground. South Carolina with just three. Well, at least they're not minus anymore. And look at this. South Carolina almost to the century mark and chunking it, and Arkansas with just 76 yards. As we're just a few ticks inside the final period. 1446 to be exact. Carolina up 7-0. Lunny got a man open. Meadows wide open, and he caught it. Oh, he caught it at the 21-yard line. 
absolutely amazing. First time all night you've seen Arkansas throw on first down. That's what the option does for you. It opens up the pass. This is a great athletic play by Lunny. Somebody's got him by the jersey, slaps him away, and this is without setting up. Off that back foot, he flips it about 35, 40 yards down the field, right on the money. 41 yards to be exact. First down and 10, Arkansas. From the 21 of South Carolina. Lunny to Johnson. Loses a yard. Tackle by Stacy Evans. Well, Stacy Evans is having an all-world game here tonight. He's been involved in so many plays and has been a standout guy the entire contest. And once again, it is Evans who breaks through, frees himself from the would-be blocker, and wraps him up and takes him down. Last year he had eight sacks, and that was too shy of a school record. Excuse me, Arkansas's fullback took the fake and fell on the ground that time, did not block the guy. Second down, 11. Now from the 22 of South Carolina. Pitch comes near side. South Carolina looking for it, but Johnson's going to throw, and there's great coverage in the end zone, and it is taken away by the South Carolina defensive back. It'll be ruled incomplete. That is Chris Abrams, a sophomore from Waynesboro, Georgia, getting the start tonight, and he did one heck of a job. Well, Abrams wasn't fooled on the play. When you're a defensive back, you have to go with your wide receiver. You see it right here, and Abrams is running step for step. You see him come right into the end zone, battle for the football, and both players will fall out of bounds. See, they both have it, and then out of bounds. Neither had possession when they went out of bounds. Third down, 11. Listen to this Gamecock crowd. Lenny's really going to have to shout for them to hear it, and he will have to call a timeout. Timeout, Arkansas. Let's go down to the sidelines now to Joe Ferguson. Joe? It appears that Oscar Malone has a hamstring injury. He's got his pads off on the other sideline. It looks like he won't be back in the ballgame for the Razorbacks. Boy, he is really taking a beating tonight. Hopefully that young man's going to be okay for the next ball game. Joe, if you're still with us, uh, any chance that we might see Madre Hill? All right, Joe Ferguson no longer on the headset down on the sideline. Arkansas the move with a crucial third and 11 play, and we said a little bit earlier, if you don't make this, do you go for it on fourth down? Well, you're coaching in the booth. No, I'm not. What up? What That'll up? get me fired in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why you're up here doing what we're doing. It's that simple. Next week, South Carolina plays host to Louisiana Tech here, and the Gamecocks start off the season with three straight home games before going to Kentucky and LSU. Arkansas next week will play the Alabama Crimson Tide, who got a real battle from Vanderbilt this afternoon before dropping the Commodore 17-7. Next week, Arkansas plays at the University of Memphis, and last year the Tigers beat Arkansas in a 6 nothing ball game. Uh, it's great to be a college football fan. There's nothing like it anywhere. I agree. Who said it was great to be young? <laughs> I'd like to experience that once again. Third down and 11. Crucial play for Arkansas. 71,542 screaming their lungs out to try and disrupt the play. Lunny looking for the corner. It'll be picked off. Chris Abrams, who just moments ago broke up a pass in the end zone intended for James Perry, saves the day for South Carolina once again. How many times can the Gamecock defense come back and make the big play to save it? Watch this. Lunny has a man open, but he overthrows him, and Abrams, playing the safety, picks it off and then takes it back up the sidelines to get it away from the Gamecock goal line. Jim, I thought that was a case where Lunny tried to throw to the spot and let the guy run to it. The defender was there. I don't know that he saw him. Well, he threw in the double coverage. Pitch back. Brandon Bennett lowers his head, rams it across the 30 to the 31. Brandon Bennett. Tackle by Stephen Conley. Stephen Conley on the sides. Abrams getting congratulations on the sidelines. 
He should get a double whammy over there for breaking up the pass in the corner of the end zone and then intercepting that one just a minute ago inside the five and taking it out to the 29 yard line. South Carolina after the three yard game needs seven for a first. Tailback Bennett swarmed under after a gain of a pair. See what they're trying to do. They're trying to establish the running game right here. Okay. So you run the ball a couple of times with your big punishing back in Bennett. Hope to free him. Hope to get that quick trap, that quick opener where he can pick up five or six yards. Arkansas's defense, however, refused to give him that opportunity. So Tannehill is going to have to, have to go back to the air. Third down five coming up. Tannehill out of the gun. Now they shift into the eye. The fullback is Pritchett. The tailback is Bennett. Play fake, Tannehill to throw. Oh, it's caught by the tight end, Boomer Foster. Foster, high roping down the far sideline. Gets it into Arkansas territory. I think, let's see, where are they going to spot it? No, it'll be on the South Carolina side of the 50. Well, Tannehill has all the time in the world to make this throw. When he has that time, he throws the rocket. And right there, Foster, with the good hands, makes the catch. You see him step out of bounds, so the official was correct with that call. Game of 12 on the play. First down, South Carolina with just over 12 minutes remaining. Game Cox lead at 7-0. Quick count. Tannehill fumbles it after handing it off to Bennett and loses back to the 37-yard line. So he will lose on the play nine. All right, watch him pull away from center. And then I think he just lost it. I think the ball just squirted out of his hands. I think it may have hit either the fullback Pritchett's thigh pad, possibly. We'll take another look at it. There you see yeah. right off the hip. Caught him on the hip. South Carolina now, second down, 18. Tannehill with a play fake. Throws it short. Pritchett, 35 40. Across the midfield strike. Gets it to the Arkansas 45 yard line, a yard shy of a first down. South Carolina looking at second down and 18. They got 17. Well, you know, Charlie, this is a situation that the Gamecocks have had success going to their backs out of the backfield. We said that they would go to Bennett with a little flare pattern and some screens. This time it's Pritchard. You see the pump fake one way, then he comes back to Pritchard. Running room here, nice cut back into the center of the field, and he's one yard short of the first down marker. Well, what a beautiful set up on the play from the 45 quick count Tannehill fumbles it and the markers play fly. never got underway too many folks jumping well it got underway but <laughs> looked like South Carolina had about four or five guys offsides jumping a gun Tannehill once again dropped the football and it, it was a be very a quick procedure. Count. yeah illegal procedure against we have a dead ball. Illegal right. procedure. Ball start on the offense. Your five yard penalty repeat it out well, here we are again, gentlemen, after a spectacular play, another faux pas. So it's third and six, between six and seven yards to go for a Carolina first with 10.44 to go in the fourth period. Tannehill with time, fires it. Away from the intended receiver, far side of the field, around the 41-yard line, intending it for Thomas Pritchard, 84. Tracy fourth Cantaloupe. down. Excuse me, Charlie. Tracy Cantaloupe with excellent coverage for Arkansas that time. He was all over him. It was good coverage. Tannehill did indeed have time, but this time they, they did the roll, trying to roll away from the big rush that Arkansas was putting on, and he did have time, but just couldn't make the pass happen because of the coverage. South Carolina offense did their job that time, got themselves out of a hole, gave the defense some breathing room, or some time to, to get a little rest, and now they have a chance to pin Arkansas back deep in their own territory. With the exception of that second down and one play where they got up to line very quickly and then botched the play. Kick off by Jeff Coat, wobbly kick. Somebody may have gotten a piece of it. Fielded by Peavy at the 20. Peavy up to the 25. So Arkansas will have it with 10 minutes and 19 seconds remaining and down to Carolina 7 0. South Carolina had better put a security guard around their punter. Danny Ford may load him up and take him with him. And Jeff Coat explaining right now, yeah, a guy did indeed get a piece of that one. 
7-0, Carolina leads Arkansas. Hope you're enjoying tonight's telecast. Lunny with a three-man front staring at him. Fires it, long, man open. Dropped in and out of the hands. It would have been a tough catch at the 45. A very tough catch for James Perry. And he can't hang on. Anytime you go for that sideline pattern, the ball has got to just be, you know, be a perfect throw. And that was a very difficult catch to make by Perry. Brad Scott, the South Carolina coach, trying to pick up his first win as a head coach. And Danny Ford trying to pick up his 103rd career win. His team down to the game, Cox 7-0. From the 25, second and 10. Lunny in trouble. Wanted to pitch it back to Johnson, but he was smothered. Ronnie Smith was all over him, along with David Turnipsey. Well, once again, it's that Gamecock, the front uh, defensive uh, front line, that makes the penetration this time and fouls up everything. He had no opportunity to pitch the football. Smith slowed him up. Turnipseed polished him off. It's a loss of a yard, third and 11. Listen to this Gamecock crowd. Lenny to throw on third and long, dumps it off short, knocked on the seat of his pants. Never had time, really, to deliver it the way he wanted to. We could easily see the SEC Defensive Player of the Week come out of this ball game. There's been some great defense play. Carolina's defense has done a tremendous job, as has Arkansas. Lunny dropping back when it didn't have any time at all. Very wisely just ditched the football. And that was Damian Youngie. On the play, the 6'3", 235-pound redshirt freshman out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. Now the Hogs are going to have to punt it with Matt Waite. High-hanging kick will go out of bounds. Around the 50-yard line. 9.20 left in the ball game. Carolina clinging to that 7-0 lead and pretty fair country field position as they mark it just inside the 50 on the Carolina side of the field. And after the game 49. Cock defensive unit, Charlie, gets a standing O. And well-deserved. Tannehill with room to work and the spread set. Inside, out of the shotgun to Brandon Bennett, who will get about two on the play. Ridden down by Willie Johnson, the senior from Lufkin, Texas. You know, Ray, I'm really impressed by the way that the respective linebacking cores have played for, for both teams tonight. We talked a little bit about South Carolina's, but Arkansas's linebacking core, uh, core, they have been on top of almost every play, too. That was a question mark for Arkansas coming in this year. They, their linebacking core depleted by graduation. They have played great the first two games. Second down, eight. Low snap. Tannehill dropped. Dropped by Brandon Bennett. Thrown low, a tough pass to catch, but catchable at the 46-yard line, and it's third down. Well, more difficulties with the snap, particularly when they run out of the shotgun, and that forces the timing of your quarterback uh, to be off immediately. So he gets a little jumpy feet back there because he's fishing around trying to find the ball on the ground. When you're the quarterback, you, you got other things to think about whether or not the snap's going to be good or bad. Both teams offensively quite different from last week. Each team had 30 first downs against their opponents. Not anywhere close tonight. Big play for Pitts at the fullback. That's the same play early on South Carolina's last series. They ran to the other side. You're absolutely right, Charlie. It's the uh, misdirection only. This time, instead of running the football, they go for the little dump-off pass. It was successful in that last drive that they had. Once again, watch Tannehill with the fake to Bennett, then check it off to the other side to Pritchett. Nice blocking. Pritchett with some fine running as he breaks a couple of tackles. That's just a great call right there. You use uh, uh, Brandon Bennett as a decoy and go the other way. First down, South Carolina. 
from the Arkansas 39 with just over eight minutes to play. The give is to Bennett. Tries to bump it outside. Gets it near the 36-yard line. Tackle by Trent Knapp. If coming in, you had told me that, Ar Trent that Bennett would have 37 yards rushing with 7.52 ago in the game, I'd tell you, Arkansas would be up two touchdowns. Oh, I know. And it's just what the three of us had discussed prior to the game. We thought that there were going to be lots of points in this game. Tannehill on the run, fires, man open, caught! What a catch on his back. Kate at the seven-yard line. What a catch. It was most difficult for Tannehill to throw across his body. It was not a good pass, but it was catchable, and Kate on his back gathers it in. First down, goal to go, game caught. You know what, Charlie? They finally came up with a big play at a crucial time. Instead of somebody dropping the football, it's a sensational grab while he's on his back. Look at that catch by Case. Tannehill in a first and goal to go call. Low snap again. Tannehill shuffle pass. Pritchett inside the five into the end zone. His second touchdown of the night. Second touchdown of the night for Stanley Pritchett, the junior from College Park, Georgia. Well, that was just power on power. Watch Pritchard right here off the slow snap. Here's the little flip ahead, and Pritchard does it all. The hole opened up, and then Pritchard ran over three would-be Arkansas tacklers. Score comes with 7-16 to play. And now the point after coming for South Carolina from number 14, Reed Morton. That drive, six plays, 51 yards. Pritchett saying, hey, guys, forget about Bennett. I'm out here. <laughs> Kick is up, and it is good, and the home folks lead at 14 nothing. Well, you finally saw a sustained drive that culminated in a touchdown. We saw it right at the end of the first half of play. We didn't see it at all in the third quarter, and now we've gone halfway through the fourth stanza, and finally the Gamecocks put all the pieces of the puzzle together and score six. And this will be ruled as a complete pass and a touchdown for a reception. And you saw the hole open up and then Pritchard carry three tacklers with him into the end zone. He's just a little guy, 6'1", 230. Eight first downs in that drive, all passes. We find out now offensively what Arkansas is made out of. One of the drawbacks, one of the minuses of the option is the fact that you can't come back from two or three touchdowns down. Arkansas down 14 nothing with 7-16 to go. We might see Mike Cherry, who's the pure passer, but I'm not sure that Arkansas is ready to push the panic button just yet. So lots of time left on the clock. There's the scoring drive, six plays. You saw 51 yards there, just over two minutes. Tannehill on the seven-yard touchdown pass. When I say push the panic button, I'm not talking about bringing Cherry in. I'm talking right. about whether they want to get away from the running game. Simpson ready to kick it off for South Carolina with 7-16 to play. And Carolina with a 14-0 lead. Meadows camps out under it at the six. Meadows looking for running room. It's not there. Goes out just as he crosses the 20. A swarm of garnet jerseys over on the far sideline. Jerry Cousins stopping J.J. Metters, Arkansas, first down. Well, we'll see now if the South Carolina defense still has wind in its sails and if they can play as suddenly as they have throughout this entire game or if they are a little bit tired. And we'll also find out right now if Arkansas can have a sustained offensive drive. Mike Cherry, the quarterback for Arkansas, for the second time tonight. Last week, three of six passing against SMU. Goes on the quick pitch this time. Trying to get outside Madre Hill, and he's to the corner and banged out of bounds, but not after picking up a first down at the 35. Ray, you talked about this guy being player of the year in high school. In high school, he had 68 career touchdowns and rushed for over 6,000 yards. That is amazing. He played for David Alpey at Malvern High School. David was my high school quarterback coach. Uh, this, this young man is a blue chipper all the way. He's got breakaway speed. He gets on that quarter by himself. He'll be in the end zone by himself in a few seconds. And the time of possession favoring Arkansas, but it's the Gamecocks 
who are favored on the scoreboard. Several missed field goals for Arkansas. Botched opportunities. Pitch comes to Hill once again. Trying to cut back. Runs over his own man and crosses the 40 to the 41 and gets five and a half yards on the play. You know, Ray, you said you don't think they need to push the panic button because we still have more than six minutes to play in this game. And obviously they have felt that way because they're running the football. But they do have to have the big play offensively. They got to have a pass play that's, you know, 25, 35, 40 yards in this series. Well, they certainly have to keep their minds, besides on the pass, on Madre Hill, who carried it a couple of times with good chunks of yardage each time. Once for a first down. Now, Arkansas is just over four yards shy of first down on second down. 6-21 remaining. Blunny to throw across the middle. Meadows has it knocked away from his path of vision. And a great defensive play there by 45, Hank Campbell who got a hand in his face, and then when it hit his body, he stripped it away. Well, Campbell has been in on an awful lot of plays uh, in tonight's game, and he has basically been a, a big-time tackler. We've seen some of his hits. Here he shows his skills at going after the football and knocking it away from the receiver. Cherry checked off at the line of sk scrimmage, Charlie Mack. At that time, I thought he didn't wait for Meadows to clear. That is Cherry, the quarterback, 18, replacing Barry Ronnie Jr. Split backs for Cherry. Third down, four. Back to throw Cherry across the middle. Man open in and out of the hands of Marius Johnson. And it looked as though if he'd caught it, Ray, he had the first down easily. That's been the story for Arkansas all night. We'll take another look at it. Right into your living room, right in the hands of Marius Johnson. No reason why he didn't catch the football, but nobody feels any worse than he does. So it is fourth down, and Matt Waite will kick for the Hogs, and there is a, a guy with a lot on his mind right now, Arkansas head coach Danny Ford. South Carolina goes for the run back, and Waite hits it off the side of his foot, but it gets an Arkansas roll inside the 20, rolling to the 16-yard line. Well, it wasn't pretty, but it sure was effective. The Arkansas offense is not going to do it. The defense has to make the big play. South Carolina's got it back, a 14-point lead with under six minutes to play. And there is Steve Tannehill with his head coach, Brad Scott. You Arkansas fans, uh, the Hogs at home next Saturday up in Fayetteville against the University of Alabama. There are tickets remaining. And I know Danny Ford, as he said, uh, has said all along, he'd love to see a sellout up in Fayetteville next week. So get out and get those tickets. Tannehill works from the shotgun from his own 16. Shifts into the eye, goes up under center. Arkansas three-man front, give it off to the tailback, Brandon Bennett. Bennett works his way to the 19-yard line in a pickup of about three, maybe four yards. Hit down by Trent Knapp. See, Charlie, right here now, the Gamecocks would like nothing better than to have Bennett take over. They'd like nothing better than to hang on the football. They don't need points, but they'd sure like to run at least three to four, four minutes off the clock. And you hear the Carolina four, uh, fans, they're chanting, Danny, Danny. 29-yard line, or excuse me, the 19-yard line is the spot for Carolina. Looking at second and seven, Arkansas jumps, and so does the Carolina left tackle. Number 54, Luther Dixon, the junior out of Palmetto, Georgia. And that'll cost them five. If, if Luther's going to move, everybody in the stadium is going to see ball. Ball. Illegal procedure. Ball start on the Be Five yards. Five yards. So now second down at 12 is coming. Luther just a mere 6'5 and 279. Youngest of 10 children. Well, he didn't miss much at the dinner table, that's for sure. Not much there at all, and South Carolina Let me third down and very long Excuse coming up me. now to six. Tannehill kept the football. It looked like he handed it off for a second, but he was sacked Where way back at the 11-yard uh, yeah. line. Or, excuse me, make that to six. Well, so South Carolina has been going backward after holding Arkansas. 4.50 left. And now the Razorbacks, of course, call timeout. They want to stop the clock. Well, what can happen right now after we look at this play is that if Arkansas gets a turnover here and scores, we got a brand-new ball game with 
just under five minutes left. Well, they, they want to force care. They like to stop Carolina Cole right here and make them kick out of their own end zone and go for the block. I told you a second ago that the defense had to come up with a big play. If they can score a touchdown, that'd be a big lift to the offense. Well, that was Marcus Adair. He was not fooled on that ball fake that time by Steve Tannehill. And Marcus Adair playing in some pain tonight. He had three teeth injured last week after blocking a punt against SMU. Very, very painful. Went to the dentist on two or three occasions prior to this game. Had those teeth rearranged. Interesting story about that young man, Charlie. He's out of Memphis East High School, and uh, his coach uh, had him running wind sprints because he was late for practice a couple of times. And the coach one day said, "You want to lift home?" And he said, "Sure." And he lived like 10 or 15 miles from practice, and he was walking to practice every day. Is how bad he wanted to play. Coach felt kind of bad, but he's turned into one heck of a football player. Transferred to Arkansas from Air Force. South Carolina's got a hold on to the football, third and 20. They don't need to turn it over down here. If you're an Arkansas fan, you want them to do just that. Turn it over. Give is up the middle to the fullback, Pritchett, and he is to the 11 yard line, and the Gamecocks will have to boot it away. Junior Soli, the nose guard, on the tackle for the Razorbacks. Well, right there, you're just trying to maintain possession and get it away from the goal line so that you do indeed have some room to uh, kick the football. Four twenty five left to play the touchdowns for South Carolina have come in the second period and this period the fourth period and Pritchett has scored them both Derwin Jeffcoat trots on the field he'll kick from his own end zone is Arkansas coming after it remember all those low snaps that's right this one's on the money Arkansas goes for the run back kick is away line drive shot kid at the forty five of South Carolina. Still on his feet, gets out of a tackle up the near sideline and hit out of bounds by Jeff Coat inside the 30 round of 27. What an effort! What an effort by Carl Kidd. Once again, special teams difficulty for the Gamecocks. Two missed tackles on this play. Here's the first one right here. Here's the second one right here. You can't do that on special teams and be successful. Danny Ford wouldn't think right now that's called difficulties after the problems he's had with this game. You're, game. you're right. Arkansas in business at the South Carolina 27, 353 to play. Carolina 14 zip. Cherry the quarterback. Pop, I mean really pop by Stacy Evans. Boy, did he take a shot. Well, Cherry, great concentration looking right down the middle. Had a man open, but didn't get the chance to deliver. If there's a defensive player being named for this game, this is the guy right here. Watch the bull rush and wham! That hurt me. Jerry's head went one way, the ball the other. Wow. Second down, 10. Arkansas has one timeout left. From the 27 of South Carolina, Cherry swing pass out in the flat. It's Marius Johnson cuts it back against the green to the 15 to the 14. First down, Arkansas. 13-yard pickup on the play. Big play for Arkansas. Mike Cherry subbing for Barry Lunny. Arkansas in a position where they want to throw the football. Cherry didn't get fancy after having his head knocked off on the last play. Just a little flare pass out in the flat, and Johnson made the best out of it, picking up a big first down for Arkansas with 3.39 to go. And those particular patterns have been successful for both sides in tonight's game. The little flare pass, a little checkoff pass. First and 10, Arkansas, trying to get something going here late. Johnson takes the pitch, looking for a wall of blockers, and he fights his way down to the six-yard line. Has to get it just outside to pick up the first, and there's a hanky down where he went down. Marcus Johnson, That stops the clock with 3.18 to play. Eric Sullivan's on the Let's see if we can pick it up. We have a five-yard face mask from the seven-yard line to half the distance. Right there. Face mask, Tony down. Watkins, 24, grabbed him. So, it is first down goal to go now from the three-yard line for Arkansas. And this was all set up on a great punt return by Kidd for the Razorback. Well, he's been doing that all night. Kidd's had a wonderful game also. 
Here comes the crowd again. Three tight ends for Arkansas. Split backs behind Cherry. First down goal to go inside the five. Give it off to Marius Johnson. Fumbles in the end zone. Scramble for it. South Carolina has recovered and killed another Arkansas threat to score. These folks are going crazy, and they've got reason to go crazy. That is unbelievable. That is absolutely unbelievable. Ray, you talked about it in the first half. I know they don't have any bullets left, but there must have been one. Johnson with a second effort, trying to get that second effort. He just lost the football. Nobody put a helmet on it. He just gives it away. Ran into the stack, still had it there. Somebody reaches in, slaps it away with a hand. Touchback. South Carolina will take over at the 20. Recovered in the end zone by Aubrey Brooks. You're in that situation. You put the freshman on the sideline, Montre Hill. You want that experience in there in a crucial situation. And Johnson, the guy with the experience, the junior, loses the football. It was stripped away by Reggie Richardson. Give it off to Brandon Bennett. Great effort outside. Gets to the 27, but on the phone, there's a penalty marker at the 20. That's probably going to be a holding against the Gamecocks, and it is. Generally, when the flag is tossed in that particular area of play, you're going to get the hold on the offense. And they'll mark it off. Have an illegal bag of push in the back. So they'll get 10 yards penalty. Repeat the back. Well, instead of the hold, it's the push in the back. 250 left. What an unbelievable night for the Arkansas offense. And what an unbelievable night for the South Carolina defense, which gave up 561 yards to Georgia here last week. You know, this is something that after this game is over, people are going to say, Wow, what a game I just saw. But wait till the coaches break down this game, Phil. Now first down and 20. Tannehill gives it off to Bennett. Bennett in trouble, cuts it up to the 12-yard line. And it's second down and long, Junior Soli on the stop for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Tannehill coming to the line of scrimmage now, and he's just watching the 25-second uh, clock on the other end, let it run down to four or five seconds before they snap the football. And we and have an injured player down. South Carolina gladly uh, sit on the clock, run it out here, and go home with a 14 to nothing win. That's Randy Wheeler, 75, I believe. I may have insulted someone's son a second ago when I was talking about the deep snapper for South Carolina. I'm not sure that it's the uh, freshman Beckwith because the deep snapper has handled things well for South Carolina tonight. There's Brad Scott. Looks as though he'll pick up the Dom, his Carolina first win player, as a head Randy coach of the Wheeler. game. Cox injured player 75, Randy Wheeler, the sophomore from Hartsville, South Carolina. And here he comes off under his own power. And that is always a good sign. Randy Wheeler at 6'3", 279. His backup is 67, Aaron Ponder, a junior from right here in Columbia. There's only one player on the Arkansas squad from Columbia. That's 91, Gino Bell, who played at Columbia High. Well, we count down now to the two-minute mark. Arkansas has played just two games previous to this in the Eastern time zone. Will play only two this year at South Carolina and Tennessee. The Hogs had won their last three trips to play in the Eastern Zone at South Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia, but not tonight as it appears. Prior to joining the SEC, Arkansas had played only nine games in the Eastern Time Zone, and their record in the Eastern Zone was seven and five. Well, Bennett again with another carry, and Arkansas calls timeout, and that is their last timeout with a minute 43 left in this game. Danny Ford pulling his hair out. He's really disappointed in his team, not in the play of the defense and not totally in the offense, but the breakdowns in the kicking game, very costly for Arkansas. Ford not accustomed to losing here. That's Carolina's new head coach, Brad Scott. Ford 7-3-1. and one. Uh, No, he's 4-2 and two against uh, South Carolina here at williams Price Stadium. When you look at things, when you look back at a game like this and something I alluded to earlier, when South Carolina loses its opening game at home and play at home the following week, they're 6-2. and two. 
And now they're going to be seven and two. That's impressive. And it'll also be Brad Scott's first win as head coach of the game guys. Just 143 left to go, and Arkansas has used its last timeout. What a tremendous, this is my first trip in here to Columbia, South Carolina for a football game. I, I was here as a sports reporter once doing some stories on the town and, and the facilities and the university as Arkansas joined the Southeastern Conference. But uh, you're looking at Wheeler now walking the sidelines and maybe headed for the locker room. But watch here, he gets it from both sides and gets bent in half. But this is a tremendous environment for college football. Is what I wanted it's to say. It's absolutely fabulous. Yes, it absolutely is. fabulous. And this is the SEC. It's like this everywhere, just about. Tannehill give up the middle, and there is Pritchett, the fullback, out to around the 25-yard line. But that is fourth down, and Carolina will have to boot it away with 1:32 and the clock running. Time left in the ball game. Again, Pritchett has had a fabulous ball game. He has scored. Both touchdowns in this game. One on a one-yard plunge in the second quarter. The other on a shuffle pass and covered seven yards from Tannehill. And right now, what the Gamecocks want to do is concentrate on making a good snap and protecting against the block punt. You want to kick the ball down the field and then cover the Arkansas player who is going to attempt to return the punt as we move inside of a minute. Talked about one Arkansas player from South Carolina. Now South Carolina takes a timeout. The Gamecocks have 45 players that hail from South Carolina. Well, what Steve Tannehill did is he went out on the uh, field and, and stayed there. And then as the clock ran down, he called timeout with one second left as he took down the clock as far as it could go. And we are now at 56 seconds remaining in this game. We'd certainly like to thank everyone for the hospitality shown here in Columbia, South Carolina, both sports information directors, the athletic directors, both coaching staffs, both sports information departments, everyone here involved in this broadcast. We can't tell you how much we appreciate it. A great deal of class on both sides. It's been a wonderful evening for me and for uh, everybody here in the booth and, of course, the guys in the truck that uh, provide you with the great pictures and the great replays. And uh, we've had a good time. This is a combined effort. We'd like to thank Video Seat and the Arkansas Razorback Network for getting together and allowing us to do this and sending it back to Arkansas as well as covering the state of South Carolina. On to punt is Marty Simpson, the senior, who was the number one punter most of last year, averaged 35.6 a kick. Here comes the rush. He gets it away, a line drive kick. The most important thing was that he got it away. Now let's see what Kidd can do. He's got nowhere to go. He needs to get out of bounds, bounds and yeah. that's what he does. <laughs> Great kick coverage by South Carolina. 45 seconds remain in this ball game. It's amazing because we've talked about some of the problems the special teams for the Gamecocks have had in this game, and they cover this perfectly. There is no room to run for Kid. The state dance here in South Carolina is the shag. That was somewhat close to a shag. <laughs> They'll be doing some dancing here tonight. Absolutely. There'll be a lot of shagging going on. From the 37-yard line, Arkansas, down by 14. They got to air it out with just 45 seconds left, and the Hogs have no timeouts remaining. Cherry in trouble. Flings it. Complete to Johnson. Johnson out to the 43. Well, with no timeouts left, the clock continues to roll. South Carolina, by the way, has Louisiana Tech here at the stadium next week. You hear the crowd counting this one down. Harvey Bradford Scott, 39 years old from Arcadia, Florida, will get his first victory as a head coach. Meadows with a catch goes out of bounds in South Carolina territory, 11 ticks left. Brad Scott, a 1972 graduate of DeSoto County High in Arcadia, attended the University of Missouri Rolla. He was in the pre-med program there in 79, a graduate of the University of South Florida, received his Bachelor of Arts degree in science education. In 84, he became a graduate of Florida State University, a graduate assistant, received his Master of Science degree in athletic administration. 
Cherry to gun it. Man open. Caught inside the 30. Tripped up down to the 27. That is Sydney, Arkansas with four ticks left. Can't win it, but would sure like to score. First down. Fourteen nothing South Carolina. Snap, throw it down. And that will stop the clock. It was stopped anyway, but they wanted to regroup and have more time in the huddle to call this play. And that's why that was done. You know how fickle football fans are. There are probably those Arkansas fans who are saying, let's change the offense. Let's throw it more. You're moving the football now. But there's nothing wrong with Arkansas's offense. They moved the football tonight. They just shot themselves in the foot at crucial times. Time and time again it took place tonight. You know, the kicking game we've talked about so much with Arkansas tonight. They've bought so many opportunities. Remember last season, Arkansas missed a point after against Mississippi State, tied the Bulldogs at cost the Hogs a winning season and a bowl bid, Ray. Single setback behind Cherry. This should be the last play of the ball game. He'll gun it far corner. And it's in to the corner and out of bounds. And Brad Scott gets his first win as a head coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks. This is a game, I assure you, he will remember for the rest of his life. No, many no matter how many other games he has, he'll remember this one. I could not believe Brad Scott, uh, we heard him say in the pregame show, that they said of three things they told him when he came here. One of them was, you got to beat Arkansas. I couldn't believe that. This is a situation where Brad Scott is going to walk off this field going to feel wonderful but when he gets in the locker room he's going to tell his guys fellas it feels great to get the W but wait until we break down the tape and show you exactly what we did in this game and there's Danny Ford who is now four and three in Columbia South Carolina the last time he lost here was 87 with Clemson that score was 20 to 7. Well, South Carolina with the shutout, pitching the shutout 14 to nothing. You saw Brad Scott going off with his son, John, 10 years old. He has an older son, Jeff, who is 13. And that's got to be a very happy family there tonight. We don't have to tell fans in this state, nobody hates to lose any more than the guy you just saw on your screen, Danny Ford. He's not a happy camper. Well, well, gentlemen, this has been a real pleasure, a perfect setting for a football game. We mentioned the hospitality on both sides.